we go. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. My name is Dean, and uh, we are back. Ryan Lindley is here today uh, at Ryan Lindley on Twitter. The Sheeple Shepherd Podcast is where you can find him. Walk across his back, supporting local glory holes today, which is good news for everybody in the it's all about supporting region. local. Absolutely, uh, and uh, you can find him at ninety five seven Cruise FM in Edmonton at Lachlan Cross on Twitter and back by popular shirt, demand. Go yeah, to uh, my Twitter account and hit the TLR merch link. You can actually. Can we, we're, we're getting this. to the merch later, Mister Sales Guy. Right. Just hang in there. Um, but he's on uh, welcome, fire with merch, isn't he? It's Mister Merch. <laughs> well, he's in charge of the project. Uh, yeah. But uh, bringing back by popular demand, uh, please welcome from the Spies Like Us pod, available oh. everywhere. Our friend and yours, Mister Mubin Shake, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Like you know what? He guy. is Any looking thin, eh? Yeah. Looks good. Fuck, you look good. You look like um. Sorry to say it during Ramadan, but you look like a porn star. Woo! He's, he's, it's because of Ramadan that he looks good. Don't worry. Yeah. Just give it so some what time. is uh, what is Ramadan? I sorry, whitest guy in Canada. What is Ramadan? Yeah. Uh it's it's Ram uh Dan. So you got Ramadan. Dan, uh, okay, you gotta, I had it wrong. No, yeah, Ram Dan. Well, you had the glory hole shirt, so I had to make a, I had to make yeah. a sense joke. Yeah, do yeah um, but ex- but explain Ram. So first of yes. all, let me just we're gonna get to Ramen in a second. Why do you look so good? Because like you can see it in your Ooh. face, you're wow. nice and trim, you look uh, like I wouldn't fuck with you. I wouldn't, yeah. but you look great. What well, happened? Apparently Dean would fuck you, apparently. Well, I'm coming okay. on, yeah. on to you. <laughs> yeah. We're not judging. Uh, yeah, no, it's no uh, it's it's amazing how the fasting month does work because I mean okay so Ramadan it comes from the Muslim faith of course we're prescribed uh, so in the in the, the Islamic calendar you have twelve months one of the months is Ramadan and that month you fast so for example you you there's a month called the Hijjah and in that month the Muslims do their Hajj their pilgrimage yeah so Ramadan is a special month just for fasting and it's basically it's intermittent fasting is all it is. Intermittent fasting is where you go about like eight to 10 hours, 12 hours, no food. And then in a smaller window of about eight hours, you eat all your food mm-hmm. and then you just repeat that. So fasting in Ramadan is basically just intermittent fasting. It gets weird when you, when you're up in like Scandinavia where the hours are ridiculously long and some people are like a bit too hardcore, I think. And they're like, no, we must go with the schedule uh, and you got to understand, like Ramadan, it comes from like, you know, early Muslim communities which lived in the Arabian Peninsula mm-hmm. where, you know, daylight hour is very predictable. But of course, as people moved on and into different parts of the world, when you go to Scandinavia, for example, so many hours and you have only two hours to eat, that's that's that doesn't make sense. Like, I think maybe I'm like the modernist. I think you should like set a, a, a time that's normal mm-hmm. and just do and just do it that way. But most people... Uh, they they do it, man. They've been I'm doing confused. it for. Why would Scandinavia be any different than anywhere else in the world? Is the longer sun days, sun, sun down, sun down. Yeah, yeah, oh, just shit. because of where they are. Yeah, on the earth. Let me show you a globe here. If I <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's, it's just the the. Uh, I didn't know it was tied to the. Yeah. To the yeah, daylight it, hours. So so the deal with uh, and I'm am I saying it properly? I'm saying it like a total honky. Sorry. Um, Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan. Is that yeah. Ramadan. Uh, yeah, I just. Ramadan. I just yeah, I just there's an L in there. He's Mubin's putting an L in there. So it's a Ram- yeah, Ramadan. Ramadan is fine. Ramadan. Ram- Ram- Ramadan. Ramadan. Yeah. yeah. So so oh so uh, Ramadan is it like a a specific month every year? Is it a yep. floating month? What what specific when are the dates? month every year? Yeah. 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 Okay. What well, obviously it's April, right? So we or... do use the lunar calendar, so that's why it changes throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, there you go. So it goes you. goes back ten days every uh, every year. Oh, and cool. the premise is what it's to yeah. it's to be grateful when you do eat. Is it to be? Is it to focus on yourself? Like what is? It? Is it penance? Explain it because, like I said, I don't know much about it. Right, right. Yeah the uh, the stated purpose for it. I mean the 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 technical religious reason is always well because God said so. Yes, dummy. No, <laughs> uh, but but there are there are the point is to be to be restrained. Uh, and and you're you're basically showing that by eating less food. There are the other rules are like basically so from sunrise to sunset. Yeah. Uh, you know you can't eat, you can't drink. You know no lawful sexual relations. Of course, when the sun goes down, bow chicka wow wow. Hit it. Um, but it, it is to re- it is to restrain yourself and yeah. so it's no weird, whacking like, off. 
Yeah, can uh, you, not can on you a plane four times, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. Now all of a sudden it's four times. No, not you. He's talking I about this guy. As soon as he got on the show today, Mubin's like, "Oh, I thought I he was talking about me about a guy that jerked off on a plane four times." Is that you? I go, oh, "You God. bet it is." Uh, so we were talking about this guy. And he's like, "Look at the fuck look on his face." This is what he says. He's like, "Who the fuck jerks off on a plane?" I'm like, "As a matter of fact, Lachlan." <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let's yes. qualify that. Yeah, because I didn't whack off in the aisle okay like i went to the bathroom yeah but still i was asked i did didn't need to be in the same category as this guy you guys asked me if i ever beat off on a plane and i right. recall a trip to toronto one time <laughs> where i may have like pleasured myself in a bathroom well yeah on Drink a flight and then all yet. of a sudden i'm that guy's shitty, fucking shitty cousin. movie on the in-flight <laughs> Yeah, dude, you're and we're doing this to you on purpose. Back to Probably Ramadan. Kids. Um, so nothing you can't, it's there's no nothing carnal, nothing like are you allowed to enjoy anything during Ramadan? Yeah, yeah. When the sun goes down, life is normal, right? Party. Like you just go back to but the point is the point is is that you know it's a time where you, you kind of calm down, take everything in perspective. Uh, and and there is this increased spirituality, it's kind of unexplained. Uh, you know, the atheist, you guys wouldn't get it. Eh. No, um, agnostic, dude. I'm agnostic. Yeah, oh, good, good, good. like a time for Getting reflection. It. That's yeah. what, yeah, we, yeah. Do when and we're, what we, we do when we're hungover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I miss those days. Yeah. Um, you can't drink? You don't drink at all, right? No, I don't drink. I don't drink. Muslim, yeah. Muslim faith, generally speaking, would mean, yeah. does not include alcohol. Generally speaking, does not include alcohol, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I, I've been known to like, you know, once homeland. in a blue moon, if I'm somewhere and I'm with my buddies, whatever, I, I don't mind having a drink. You know, I'll have a cider. I love cider. Mm -hmm. It's just like strongbow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's strongbow like it's apple awesome. juice pretty much. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's apple juice. It makes it you feel even, like a it, million bucks. Oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't even <laughs> feel like the, the bitterness of like regular beers and stuff. I'm not yeah. really into that. Like in high school, we used to drink and I was just like, nah. What about but, Coke? Are you allowed to do Coke? Like like cocaine or yeah yeah, <laughs> so you're not, you're not supposed to you know <laughs> it, it's just it's just intoxicants in general right yeah. um there's a whole thing with trying to keep your body clean and blah blah caffeine. blah and caffeine is okay and but what's interesting it's good that you mentioned caffeine because in the Middle Ages when actually a lot of Muslim uh, theologians when they discovered you know the use of caffeine there was a whole debate among the theologians on whether this was intoxication or not. Oh, yeah. Huh? But eventually the, the coffee drinkers won out. So that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love the fact that, that, that uh, religion makes a couple of exceptions and coffee is one of them. Every religion's the same, right? Like yep. it's, it's yeah. fucking hilarious how it works. The one thing that you've been doing this week, it's funny too, because you're like, you're an educator, you fly around the world, educating different people about terrorism and insurgency and extremism. Uh, your podcast, by the way, is Fucking unbelievable. These guys are now on Amazing. YouTube, Spies Like Us. I uh, did an interview with uh, Jack Barsky. Jack Barsky is a former KGB agent who turned uh, turned around in, in, in 2014 and uh, became, it started helping the FBI. you got to listen to these part one, is part two of the hiding? interview. Be no, he's he's out. He wrote a book about it, right? Yeah, he's, he's out in public. But, yeah. It, okay, so he didn't spend a certain amount of time in hiding? He did in the beginning. Yeah, there okay. was a whole uh, yeah checking just to see, you know, if there's any targeting being done on him because the nothing. intelligence. Yeah, the intelligence community is obviously going to be keeping eyes and ears open for chatter, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. meaning like they've compromised certain Russian communication channels. And if his name came up, they would have taken action. Mm -hmm. So for a little while, they just keep watching and listening. And if there's nothing that comes up, they're like, eh. Yeah, because based alone. based on the conversation you had with him, it, it's surprising that he is still walking and breathing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I it, don't it's, need to be morbid, but no, no, it's true though. I mean, and and that's definitely something that he himself, uh, you know, was also thinking, right? So. Yeah, his his whole MO was incredible. Like uh, for years, was he was an undercover more. agent. And then, you know, they, they found out that he was in trouble. He found out he was in trouble by like he would see splashes of red paint where he was walking and he refused to like acknowledge it because that was how the KGB was like, hey, we want to talk to you. Come talk to us. Mm -hmm. And so what happened, how he got out of the KGB, which is fucking fascinating. I don't know if you know this. He told the KGB when they're like, you either report or you're dead. He's like, I got AIDS. And they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. He played the AIDS yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. yeah. So, but the interview was incredible. And if you get a chance, spies like us, uh, this is the podcast yourself, They're Brandon really Blackburn, part of the crime and conspiracy uh, originals podcast series. Uh, you can get it on iTunes, Spotify, Google, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah, th- this one interests me. Uh, January 10th, uh, who are Brandon and Mubeen? And then Wednesday's episode announcement, Brandon and Mubeen are away this week. See, as interesting as like the terrorist hunter Shane Healy and the two-part Jack Barsky series is, as great as that podcast is, when you and Brandon go away as uh, spy educators and former spies, I'm like, now I want to know where they are. That should yeah. be a fucking podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you were it was only for 40 couple, seconds long. Brandon kept <laughs> saying you were Brandon kept saying Mobim's not here right now, but he is doing That's something right. worthy. What I, were you he doing? kept saying worthy. Yeah, why weren't and, you there? And then just Tell he us. would just leave it at that. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is Mobim doing? And I knew <laughs> this was worthy. recorded like a year ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what were you doing? Tell us. Yeah, you know, I'd tell you, but I'd have to kill you. you we're know, not. Well, it's okay. We're not, <laughs> nobody's watching. We're not live. It's yeah. Fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here, let me let me show you the secrets. No, no. It was just it was just some it was just some training with yeah. uh, some counterterrorism units. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy being with like partnering with this guy because when he reached out to me, a uh, like ex CIA guy, like, and this guy did some serious shit. Like he was a targeting officer. Uh, so these are the guys who basically call in the CIA drone strikes on targets. Like, oh wow! Yeah. Like the shit we're seeing in Ukraine right now, right? Yeah, this guy, this guy was like very, like right at the tip of the spear. I mean, he they briefed presidents directly, like he's briefed like two, pre- three presidents, you know, three CIA directors, like very, very high level huh. stuff. You know, so it's mm. interesting because he uh, he doesn't really let on to that on yeah. the plot. Yeah, no, he's well. That's why, right? That's why they hire these kind of guys, right? They're very calm, quiet. They're not really like you know bravado and bragging and talking about their exploits yeah I like he, that he sounds like he could have been just a, a desk guy like yeah. a desk yeah. monkey at cia the way he talks well it's funny because his degree is in like uh public communications or like it's like a <laughs> communications degree oh wow yeah, oh. and then uh yeah it was, it was like weird. every wow. every varsity football player at every university ever he's got one of those degrees <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's uh, but he's now obviously he's making use of it yeah, you guys are really good about it. You guys they are look, good on that. They look for together. people yeah. like they look for people like that, though. You had somebody else on your podcast not long ago. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she was a, a university uh, student at the time, and she was approached and 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 uh, rec- I guess recruited or groomed. Um, she was but, a CIA member. Yeah, do you, you, I can't remember what her name was, but it was an f- amazing story. But is that what they do? They just look for somebody that they just think is going to fit the bill. Uh, yeah, yeah, they have, um, you know, they have talent spotters, so to speak. Christina Hillsburg. Um, Christina Thank Hillsburg. You. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they have talent spotters that are in, you know, various universities that have connections, you know, to those intelligence services. And they might say, hey, you know, take a look at this person. Um, cause there's, there's a whole, there's a, the way that they do it, it's really cool. Um, I don't think it, this is a national secret, but I mean, one of the things they, you know, there's diplomatic covers that are also given to people. Uh, so like they'll be CIA, but they'll also be like political counselor, you know, senior political counselor. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's a way for them to have like diplomatic contacts, uh, but being a CIA person to do that. Then you have like, like non-official covers. So what they call knocks, you always hear about this in the, in the movies. Um, and then you just have people who are like, they're just there undercover, and if they got caught, they're basically we don't know who you are. Oh wow, that's yeah. comforting. Yeah. That's she speaks, that's comforting, she speaks, isn't it? She speaks. She spoke like five languages or something, and I yeah. think she spoke an African, a, a dialect of African. Yeah. So I think that was part of the reason why she was so intriguing to the CIA at the time, yeah. if I remember the the story correctly. But you know, it was funny. It's funny. I'll, I'll, I'll we can move on from this, but I just thought it was interesting when when I was listening to that podcast because it's like we got two spies on, we got two people that did some pretty serious shit, and then we got another spy on talking about how um how the uh the world of being a spy influenced their decision makings as parents and i'm just like that's kind of funny yeah yeah <laughs> did it make you, you a better parent yeah were you when yeah. you when you became you'd a spy. be surprised uh, you'd be surprised uh, just the situational awareness and all yeah. that stuff it really does you know how many times i have i saved my younger kids from falling off because they were climbing on this or that and because like i'm always like one eye is over there and I'm ready to sprint over. Like I've saved them multiple times from like smashing their faces on the ground because 
you were climbing on the dresser or something dumb like that. You should let him go a little bit, right? Yeah, like yeah a, a little, little bit. bit of child, I mean... <laughs> little childhood trauma <laughs> yep. is good for everybody. I yeah, have some. Yeah. Like we all have a little. Yep. Bit, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I got. I had. I had to take two of them to the hospital for stitches. One because one of them threw a Stegosaurus toy. At the other one, and like the pointy part of the Stegosaurus's back split his lip. Like, what are the chances of that? And I had to take him to the freaking hospital. And then, of course, the, the doctor is looking at me like, hey, did, is it, did your parents do this to you? Like, no, my brother. Oh, my God. My brother with a McDonald's toy. Yeah. Those are always great to explain. Hey, eh? when your kid gets hurt and you take him to the hospital and you're like, yeah, why is his arm out of joint? And you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, they I look swear at you to like... God, I didn't do it on purpose. Well, like, they, immediately they, defensive. They, yeah, because that they... happened. That happened to me. My son's going to run across the road. He's like two years old. I'm like, hey, whoa, and I go and grab him, right? Because every dad's got this crazy. Yeah. No, I don't have like spy dad senses like you do where you're no, like you always hyper vigilant. Yeah. But I've got like, you know, as a parent, you, you always need to know where your kid is. So I go to grab his arm and he's still running and his little arm comes out of its socket at the elbow, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. And so you go into the doctor's office and you're like, hey, my son, his arm, I think I had something happened to it. And he's just like, his arm's out of place. And the doctor's like, what were you doing? I'm like, well, you ran across the street and I just reached out to grab him like that. And he's like, are you sure that happened? And I'm like, I start sweating. <laughs> of course. He starts sweating. Right? He starts sweating. Oh, and you're like, oh, yes, I swear to God. And you're like overly animated because the last thing you want is someone showing up to go, what's going on with your kid? And you're like, nothing. I swear to God. Like yeah. nothing. He just, he almost died. It was either death or this arm. So relax. So look, yeah. I gave him the gravel because we were traveling. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're very the, the that if you if you ha that happens, so you go to the hospital. They're very yeah. like they look at you with those very judgmental eyes. It's like, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, and, uh, so. yeah. I'm really fucking sure, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple things uh, other than you posting, and we'll get to those in a minute. Uh, series oh. after series of pictures of your food, by the way, because it is Ramadan, and any chance you get it to eat uh, before sunrise oh, and wow, after sunset, wow. look at these fucking beautiful meals. Um, <clears throat> you post a lot of this stuff, but one of the things you posted, which kind of fits that into some good. of the narratives and what we're going to be talking about today that I found really fucking interesting is, um, you, you posted something about the convoy and the convoy moving to change their name to 88 freedom convoy. Yeah. Um, can you explain that? Because we've got some news about the convoy that might surprise you. There's millions missing. I know. Shocker. Um, <laughs> yeah, weird. But, but can you explain what that is? Because as time goes on, and James is going to be on the podcast coming up in about 30 minutes. Yes, that, James. To kind of break down some arrows that are pointing to who's responsible for this convoy. And uh, it's going to be a shocker, conservatives. But whatever. I don't want to get into politics because I hate fucking politics. But, but tell us about this 88 convoy bit um, that you posted because I found that very fucking interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I, I saw news of them, uh, you know, the, somebody put it out there that, oh, they're, they're calling themselves United uh, Con uh, 88 Con uh, United Convoy. And immediately 88 jumps out. There we go. Yeah. Um, uh, so 88, eight, uh, uh, the, the eighth letter of the alphabet being H. Um, and so it's used by neo-Nazis, you know, to, uh, to, to commemorate uh, uh, Heil oh, Hitler, basically. Sakes. And then if you look at if you look at the words 88 united convoys 14 letters and that resembles you know the 14 words of white mm -hmm. supremacy and that is that is not a coincidence like i put there you know many of the the qanon types with their numerology like trying to read like monster energy drink and like you know saying that this is, means this and this means that and this number means this i mean it's it's just blatant it's not even a uh, even the when they were doing the when the convoy thing was going on, they were saying honk honk, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. H, H that's, that's not coincidence. They're not doing that just for, it could be to play with people. I mean, I don't put it past them either, but when you're, and when you're joking about it, but then you're using it as part of your thing, well then it's no longer a joke, right? Like it, it it's, it's a, it's a dog whistle and it's yeah. not even, we had a couple callers that would phone up to bitch about us talking about the convoy. Yeah. Uh, and then they would end like honk honk, yeah. Or yeah. I had it in, in messages in messenger. Hong yep. Kong. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I, that was, was. I, I, you know, and we watched all that and Lindsay and I, uh, you know, thank God for Lindsay cause he tore the cover off the trucker convoy like a week before it happened, which kind of put us in position to be able to disseminate some of the information that's been coming down where I get a little fucking weird is like, 
everybody wants to tell you what this means or what that means, right? So back to 88, and, and I know you put this up there. Like there's, when someone says, oh, that's ridiculous, you're overreaching, um, calling this the 88 United Convoy or 88 United Convoy happens to be 14 large. That's just a number that we picked and it represents oh, yeah. X yeah. and it's, it's this and it, yeah. you guys are crazy. Same thing with Hong Kong. Yeah. And it's funny because like, I hate conspiracies too, right? So like I I go back and forth between, okay, I trust Mubin more than I trust anybody else. And you should, you should follow him at Mr. Mubin Shake because you don't put up the crazy conspiracy shit, but this is real, right? The honk honk stuff was real. Uh, The 88 uh, Freedom Convoy thing, your United Convoy thing is real. Renaming it that, because if you try to find another reason for renaming the Freedom Convoy, 88 United Convoy, where where does it make congruent yeah, sense that exactly. they just picked it right like exactly. how do you explain that and don't forget these are the people who organize the rallies they are known racists i mean it is not a false accusation they are known racists i mean they're you know uh all, all every single one of them has something that you know shows their their uh you know their views okay and then surprise surprise a swastika flag shows up at the rally and then it's like, oh, well, let's not call all of them racist because blah, blah, blah. And so we're, you know, we're super nice and we don't want to be like, you know, people who are, uh, you know, on the far right who, you know, kind of uh, bro- paint everyone with the same brush. We're like, OK, we want to give them a little benefit of doubt. Then we, we just keep hearing racist stuff. And then it's like it's all about the truckers. And then like you see like four Sikh guys and they're like and all, all like, oh, look, see, because I mean, Sikh guys are all over the trucking industry. Yeah. And when you looked at that convoy thing, there's like four Sikhs there. All right. And mm-hmm. they're only there because they don't like Jagmeet Singh. They're not even like, so it just showed you that what kind of clientele they had present there, you know? And so when you then see something like this, it's not a coincidence. Mm-hmm. It's, these are signs. These are clues. These are dots that you connect. And they I love want you. They want you to know. Yeah. 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 They, they don't want it. They don't. They know they can't say it out loud. They know they can't be blatant about it. But they right. want somebody to see who they really, really are. Well, it's like it, it's talks. almost like one of these, right? Like, hey, like if anybody okay. out there understands what this means, be part of our club. Lynn, you wanted to say something. I was just going to say, off, sorry, it's okay. Every uh, every single politician, every single conservative politician, the minute at, they were at this convoy and they saw somebody that looked as though they may have been a little more tan than me. They ran for photo ops like immediately. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, see, see it's look. a diverse crowd. Yeah. Here's my, here's my token photo for, for my diversity. Yeah. And I, it's, it, it was actually embarrassingly blatant. And uh, my favorite, um, well, it's fucking photo. gross. It's fucking it gross to go up to a person of color and go, Hey, take a bunch of pictures with them. Cause it'll justify yeah. this whole thing. And then we can use them to be able to blunt the fact that 8,000 white supremacists, premises cocksuckers showed up to take over the fucking government exactly. sorry go ahead well i was just going to say one of my favorite photos from the uh from the convoy from the politician side of things was my local representative who by the way just before he got into politics was a barista at starbucks making twenty seven thousand dollars a year and now makes two hundred thousand dollars a year because he read the tea leaves and realized that alberta hated the ndp so he thought he would throw his name into the hat this dick wins and he goes right into politics and decides that it's in his best interest to go to Ottawa to do some pressers in front of all of the fucking demonstrations about how great this is. And yeah. behind him through the whole CBC interview is all this fuck Trudeau and swastika and all this fucking horrible shit. And I'm watching it on TV going, he has no idea that he's just associated himself with that entire movement based on those images. I and disagree. then of course he got in the car drove to the airport, came home, and then everyone's all over him on social media. Did you see what was behind you, you dick? <laughs> this is what you're actually supporting. And, he, and then, of course, the statement comes out, right? Yeah. And I'm like, it should have been on Starbucks letterhead. Because he's going <laughs> back to Starbucks as soon as fucking he gets shit canned when they put the NDP back in power here in Alberta, because that's just what we do. Yeah. Do I want the NDP? In, no, I do not. But that's just what we do. Jason half- Kenny has made a fucking mess of this province. They're just going to flip them out and they're just, and then they'll hate the NDP and then they'll bring somebody else in. It's just, yeah, politics. Half- <laughs> cycle. 
So well, Bean loves politics when we oh, talk fuck, about it. Oh, fuck, he hates it more than me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just useless. It's yeah, useless. it is. It is that useless. Are just, I just find that it's so, it's just all about narcissism. It's all about, it's all about the pursuit of power and maintaining power. That's all it is. It, there's no yeah. substance to it. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it just, I love, I love what it's done to me. It's like, it, it just, I have like zero interest for me. It's like, yeah, liberal Democrat, you know, NDP, this one, that one, you're all the same. Like at the end of the day, it's just the same machine. It's the same Thank game. You for saying that. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just not, I got bigger things to deal with. We we're apolitical here and we, we like right the other people who are, uh, mm -hmm. so that's why we fucking love having you here. Case in point, back to the convoy stuff. We put this out today. If you know where 8 million in freedom convoy money went, the RPCMP would like a word. Um, now that just came out today. So I, I want to play a couple, put a couple slides up. Uh, this, this might shock you guys. Someone stole money from the GoFundMe account. No. Oh, oh no. <laughs> guys, Lies. guys, this may come as a shock. You know that twenty-four million that was made, eight millions missing. Here's the Check actual breakdown. Pat King's wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's plastic. Um, oh, this it's is just... from CBC. They put an article out. You can go to deanblundell.com. We actually broke it down so you can read it. You don't have to feel like a douche when you do. Uh, but uh, the convoy protest in Ottawa is, and I found this fucking shocking. Twenty-four million total dollars in less than a month. Twenty-four fucking million. The breakdown is this. GoFundMe had, uh, I think, around $9, $10 million. There was about $12 million, uh, in the Give, Send, Go Fund, and they had the old Adopt the Trucker and a little bit of Bitcoin. You can see all the money that was raised. This is in less than a month. Uh, this was a money laundering scheme, and the money laundering scheme, to my understanding, works like this. Very, very simple. Uh, Give, Send, Go is the only uh, host of that fundraising stuff. Go send me, or sorry, Go. Uh, GoFundMe sent all the money back to the people that had donated. That was what they had to do, and there's receipts for that. This Christian Give, Send, Go Fund, though, mm -hmm. of the close to $12 million, there were just over $12 million that was made, $7.75 million is unaccounted for. So this is where it gets interesting, because James is going to come on with us coming up in a few minutes, and I had a conversation with a couple of people in the government, and uh, you would probably know some of these guys. And not not in the government, but but in law enforcement, people that uh, forensic accountants, guys that do this for a living. And they said, dude, this is incredible. This is flooding the zone. Right. So we talk about it in terms of disinformation. But what this was had nothing to do. These people were all co-opt. We know it. There's this gravy that's swimming around in our brains like co-opted for what? Eight thousand crazies. How did you get them there? Very, very simple. You keyed into their socials. You created these super idiot soldiers that would give you money, that would enable you to go there. And then going there wasn't the point, if I'm not mistaken. Like, sure, fear, all that other bullshit. But from my understanding, according to forensic accountants who kind of helped break this stuff down with me this morning, because I went over this in detail with them before the conversation, they said, dude, they did the same thing. They flooded the zone, had as many people donate from hundreds of thousands of accounts, and they are going to take whatever they can out of that. And the rest is just fucking flotsam and jetsam. So the idea was, if I'm not mistaken, is let's make as much money as we can, have as many people put as much money into this pot, make it impossible to find out who actually donated with stolen credit cards and all other stuff yeah. so that the people that organized it could take out as much as they humanly could. They knew they were going to lose more than half of what they were going to make, but didn't care. Does that make sense to you? Are you hearing some of the same things? Yeah. Welcome to the grift, right? This is uh, and it is it is money laundering. I mean, at the end of the day, this is why, um, you know, the same tools that we use to track uh, terrorist financing was brought to bear on this because uh, the <clears throat> the types and nature of interactions, financial transactions that were happening, um, they were it was it was overwhelming the system for sure. And at the end of the day, you don't have enough analysts to be able to cover all the transactions. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of them. Right. So. Um, I think they knew exactly what they were doing and uh, it's no surprise to anybody that um, you know the the money has been the money is missing quote unquote can somebody explain to me how you use the gofundme or the go send me I, like i technically speaking i don't understand how it's a money laundering thing so Go go ahead, Mubin. Well, you, I was just you can go first. Well, I was just going to say that. Uh, I mean, so think about what money laundering is, right? That you have 
One is you want to hide the origins of your money or you're trying to hide the destination where that money is being sent. And if that money could be lawful, it could be legal money that you have, but you're sending it, the destination is unlawful. Or you have unlawful money and you're sending it to, let's say, another unlawful place. Normally in, in money laundering, it's unlawful money and then sent to a lawful or the yeah. output is lawful income. Um, but here it was, so I guess, what would you call it? If it's going from, if it's That's lawful money confused. and going to unlawful or unlawful money going to unlawful, then what is that? What is that called? Theft? That's why I've been confused by this know, thing being called a money probably. laundering scheme, right? Like, mm -hmm. as I keep thinking to myself, well, that doesn't make any sense because normally right. you would take money you're trying to hide from the government that you made based on doing something untoward. And then you would find a way to include it into a business like a nail salon or whatever the hell it is in the movies or the TV shows. And then that they don't actually report the money that's coming in and they're making more money than they actually are. Hence yeah. they're cleaning the money. Right. So Ozark. this make, this doesn't make any sense to me. Ozark is a similar situation. Breaking bad. They did the same thing. Right. Yeah. So that's why I've been confused by this because Anyway, well, think about it this it, way. It, think it, about it this way. Okay. If, if if I'm not, and, and sorry, I'm moving, but if, my understanding is, and I could be wrong, but think about it this way. If they have hundreds of thousands of people, it is so difficult for any, and accounts and transactions, it is almost next to impossible to be able to chase all that down and find out where the bulk of that stolen money is went has gone like they, they made an admission in that article that the CBC wrote that they've only been able to uncover about four or five hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. And we're talking millions in Bitcoin. Um, and there are still people walking around with active wallets that they're following that have access to this money. But the idea was as many different ways that you can try to funnel money into this account from as many different accounts so that they could take money out as fast as the money was going in. And at the same time, make it very difficult to track, because if you remember when we had Hi-Fi on a couple of weeks ago and he broke down those 16 different um, donations from one email address, yeah. but 16 different email accounts. I mean, it is obfuscation. That's the goal, yeah. right? If I'm not if that I'm to understand when you're money laundering, it's create as many smoke and mirrors as you can so that you can hide behind all those smoke and mirrors so that you can take that money out, which is really what we're talking about here. Movie. Mm. Right? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And I'm, I'm just kind of half waiting for that Bitcoin money to get robbed. You half. <laughs> you remember you have, more often than people realize. Oh, no yeah, one invest in Bitcoin, man. I know some people, everyone's into the Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. Don't do it. No. The Russians and the Chinese are going to steal it. Yeah. Hack into They're going to steal it. Oh, Dude, there's a secure wallet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. Go, go read up on all the millions of dollars that have been stolen out of Bitcoin. One point eight months. billion in the last Ridiculous. year. Ridiculous! Like 1. I don't know why anyone billion. would think that that's. <laughs> like, go ahead, yeah, yeah, donate, please, give all your money, and then end up living in your SUV. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> that's everybody. Sorry, Lynch, you were going to say something there. No, I was going to say we saw it. It was like a foreshadowing um, when Locke brought up uh, Breaking Bad. Um, you remember they had the online fundraiser for for Walt's cancer. Yeah, and yeah. it was like the 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 foray Ding. into into Ding. showing how to to digitize money laundering, and and that was kind of it. It's you can go out and get yourself some prepaid visas and do whatever. Like it's it, yeah, there's the, so many. The, he was putting bad money into that. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's oh, why dude, I'm curious there, about. There's the... bad money. There's good money. There's so much money from so many people. It's impossible to discern. To figure it out. Yeah. And then, and now the eight million's gone, and someone accomplished the goal. Right? They literally activated eight to ten thousand of our dumbest people just so they could steal eight million. Like that's fucking really. That's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. You know, the the, the pain or and the clean. suffering that they caused. Yeah, to clean, clean eight million. Eight million. million. But yeah. I like, wouldn't there be a very select few that that have access to taking money out of those GoFundMe's? Strangely be enough, no. Easy. The only wouldn't person, the only person, and and I did some reading on this today. The only person who apparently had access to that was Tamara Lish. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if if eight million goes missing, do we not like? Someone it's knew like the woman that just go. got arrested for killing her husband that wrote a book called How to Kill Your Husband. Yeah. She's in jail and going to court right now. <laughs> we kind of know she killed her husband. She yeah, wrote yeah, yeah. a book 
detailing all the ways to kill your kill husband. Yeah. 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 But Tamara Lish doesn't have that, that degree. And that's the thing, right? Like that's what, that's why it is so greasy. And we're going to have James on to talk about some of the people that, that are behind, maybe behind the scenes here, but it's um, it is not on its face what it looks like, which is why we were all so confused to start this whole thing. Right. Like, what are they going for? What is the idea? Why are they there? Why are they still there? Everybody was promised a piece of the money and yep. they were never going to get the money. They were never going to get paid. That's the fucked up part. And I hope each trucker knows that today. Moonbeam. Like, I hope each person that shows up knows that they were lied to from the start to the fucking finish. And now the money's it, gone. It's it's sad, you know, and at one level, right, that people are taken advantage of in this way and that people have put themselves in that position because, you know, lack of critical thinking skills. They've just, uh, you know, they've they've insulated themselves from any kind of uh, ideas or beliefs that go counter to what they think and believe. Uh, and and they've just put themselves in this position and like people bringing their children there and literally using their children as human shields, like putting them in front of the cops so that the cops wouldn't do it. Like when you're doing stuff like that, like you really have to, you know, reevaluate what's gone on in your life that, you know, that's brought you here. And so we, we saw what happened, everyone thinking that they were part of some great thing that was larger than themselves. And they and they they took you know they 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 took their family and they spent all their money and this and that and for what at the end of the day for what i mean you didn't get rid of trudeau you didn't get rid of the man the mandates i mean for what what was the purpose at the end of the day what did you achieve other than you know spending all that money and time mm. yeah it's I'm crazy having a hard time dig into my sympathy well which is already <laughs> shallow to begin with but <laughs> I see where you're going. We should yeah. try to find empathy for those people. You haven't I'm had a meal to... today, Mabin, so I understand where you're at. You're yeah. emotionally I'm nicer. From the... <laughs> I'm nicer. I get the other way. Hey, so speaking yeah. of meals, speaking of meals, we'll, we'll let you go in a second, but um, I just want to say thank you yeah. and fuck you for putting these pictures on your Twitter feed, by the way. Yeah. Um, mm, um, that's good stuff. This was Iftar, so them. Iftar is the Ramadan meal you eat uh, after sunset, correct? Uh, yes, correct. To sunset what do we what have are those little triangle samosas? nuggets yeah, so those right. are triangle nuggets uh, those are samosas of course samosa uh, alberta yep, triangle those nugget. are uh those are ground beef samosas sometimes they're made with different fillings yeah. like it could be potato potato mm -hmm. and peas or mm -hmm. chicken even but i'm a purist so i it's only ground beef for me do you get the dips do you, do you get the dips with them well you know so i have a uh so my mom makes this coriander chutney and what I will do is I will mix a little bit of the coriander chutney with just regular ketchup, and I'll call it ketchupney. Ketchupney. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I do. I can only have two of them. Otherwise, like, because they're it's deep, those are deep fried, right? Like they're fried yeah. in oil. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I gotta. I'm still trying to keep fit, whatever. So I'll yeah, just have good. two. I got two, two, two maximum. Yeah, two samosa um, cut off. Two samosa cut off. Uh, yeah. What do we? Is this pork with some uh, pasta no. here? Is that, what is it? I don't chicken even know. What I'm it's grilled, it's grilled it's chicken. Pork. Yeah. Grass grilled chicken. Fuck, that it's looks good. Grilled chicken and uh, just regular pasta. All right. Cheese. Yeah, it looks good with a little bit of butter. What is this? It's post iftar Tabasco soft, not ketchup. Yes, I have standards, yo. That yeah. looks fucking delicious too. That's uh, those are that's chicken. Uh, so just cubed chicken, a little yes. bit of rice, like half cup of rice, because I'm trying to uh, lessen the complex carbohydrates, like the rice. Jasmine? Um, is that a jasmine rice? Um, no, just regular basmati. white rice. Yeah, yeah, regular basmati rice. Yeah, right. good old uh, white supremacy rice there. Um, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. It says in the Quran that the calories don't count during Ramadan. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> No, I, I, in fact, I realized because I tried to maintain my, cause I, I usually have four meals a day uh, and I do intermittent fasting. Like I'll eat from two o'clock and I'll stop eating at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just eat within an eight hour window and I was eating four meals, but I just couldn't do it this time because when you fast all day and then you have that meal at the end, it takes a little bit longer to digest. Like it'll stay there. And then when I'm still, I'm trying to drink water in that time period as well. And then you just kind of feel bloated a bit more. So I, I'm, I'm now I'm down to three meals. Um, so I got to keep my protein intake high. That's mm -hmm. the main thing. Just get my water in and I'm fine. Yeah, dude. Fine. And it's all protein here like this one. Post workout. Oh, that is take with a look at that fucking thing. Oh. Dude, that looks so good. Yeah, I, I was saying when we were that I haven't I hadn't had a steak 
at a restaurant in like two years, you know, and I went out and I was just like, and that went down so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got some mash in there. We got the pepper steak. I told them to, you know, lessen the, the mash and uh, give me a bit more veggies. Yeah. Okay, and the mash, the potatoes are complex carbohydrates. Um, so oh, it Dude, was so good. And I a glass of milk. Do, yeah, yeah. What did you say when you ordered a glass yeah, of milk? Was, at a like, yeah. I was like, do you have milk? And they're like, uh, usually only the children order that. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, give me a glass of milk. <laughs> Judge yeah. away. Get yeah. And then milk. Well, 250 picture. milliliters of milk. It's like, uh, you know, certain grams of protein. So I, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. I didn't even know. I just saw the milk in that picture. And oh, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Put totally the forgot it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then this one. Look at the oh. this one. So you married a Polish lady, sure and did. she makes fucking legit pierogies. Oh, oh yeah. Those. those. Those look legit. Oh, yeah. Those Drool. are labor Drool intensive, Drool, too. my brothers. Oh. Uh, there, I want to come to your house for Ramadan iftar. Mm hmm. I do. I know there's not enough food to go around, <laughs> but I might bring something like a little Ramadan potluck. Who doesn't want to do Ramadan with this white guy? <laughs> Did you say you were going to bring pot? No, I can't. Oh. Are you allowed to do that during Ramadan? No. All right. Well, oh, we'll maybe we'll after, though. After All right. One, uh, we'll talk. Uh, movie yeah. and Shake, Spies Like Us, name of the podcast. Go and get it today. Uh, it's right here. You can see him and Brandon Blackburn. Just an Fantastic. incredible job. If you go to Apple, iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, uh, Google, uh, you can download it. Some of the stuff is incredible. If you love learning about espionage, if you love learning about um, you know how this world works from that perspective, these two guys do the best podcast in the industry, and they're now on YouTube, by the way. YouTube for spies like us. You never looked better. Same with Brandon. Great job. Thanks for doing this, brother. When can we have you back? I guess after Ramadan. You want to get your yeah, food? yeah. Give me some time. All right. Sorry. <laughs> keep posting your food though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I will. Post. I will. Uh, all right, man. Yeah. We'll talk to you my soon. Brother, take, keep taking shots at Brandon too. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite part of the <laughs> yeah. The podcast. He's, he's also serious, and then I just drop a little joke in there, and then yeah, he I throws know. him off a little bit, you know. But he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what's fucked is that, like, if I know you a little bit, I don't know Brandon, but like mm. the fact that you're not the serious one on that show is hilarious to me. Oh no, I'm not. I can't be serious. I'm a big joker, and uh, it's it's a it's a coping mechanism, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. dark humor, all that stuff. Otherwise, too serious. You know, your life is shit. For Thanks sure. for doing this. You gotta bro. have jokes. You gotta, yeah. Right on, man. Anytime. Appreciate you. As always, we'll talk to you soon. Mubi and Shake, Mubi. ladies and gentlemen, Mubi. at Mr. Mubi and Shake on Twitter. Spies like us on YouTube. Fucking great podcast. Oh, yeah. What it it really movie. is. It really is. I got turned on to it by being on this podcast, and it's it's in my regular run. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Very good. Same. Yeah, I get a Spotify alert when he uh, he puts a new one out, and it's like the first thing I'll listen to that on that day. They're really good. Yeah. They're really yeah. good. Yeah. And they're not that yeah. long either. They're nice and no. like they keep them Compact. tight. And, yeah. Well, you know what they yeah. do is like, we never hear anything about spies. And so I'm fortunate enough to like communicate with some of them mm -hmm. <laughs> over some of this stuff, but he talks about it as he's educating other spies and he'll give you the goods, right? He never tells me anything. He's like, I'm like, there's one time I'm calling him like, tell me about this. He's like, no, I'm like, come on. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't, I can't talk about that. And there's another time the former industry minister, Tony Clement, I'm phoning him like, Hey dude, are there aliens? He's like, I can't talk to you about it. I'm like, there are, aren't they? He's like, Come no, on. I swear to you. Get him and on. Still don't tell me. None of those people tell me. Anyway, speaking so of podcasts is, we like. You think Mobine, this is why. Do you think Mobine knows about aliens? Ceases. This is why we're not, we wouldn't make good spies, Dean, because we'd Terrible. tell everybody. Oh, fuck, I'd be the worst spy ever. <laughs> well, yeah, I, you. I share everything. Do you know when uh, he said he, he likes to crack jokes when things get serious? Like, that's kind of his, his fallback. Yeah. That's what I would do in a very serious spy situation. Like, I'd be in front of like, maybe the KGB or I'd be in front of, like, you know, something. And then we'd be like, what do you think? And I'd be like, oh, my God, I can't stop laughing. I'm totally a spy. <laughs> this is this is my nervous laugh. <laughs> well, it, it's funny you mentioned that. Don't he, poison me. Yeah, don't and poison Brandon me. Had, so funny. Uh, they had they were they they they'll swap stories every once in a while and it's usually innocuous stuff. But they were talking about, I think Brandon uh, was talking about uh, being at the like CIA training, like whatever that Langley. is. Like there's a yeah. Langley, and That's, and he yeah. had a teacher that was like really serious, but had like wildly dark sense of humor, and was into like he was like a aut like into autopsies or something like that, and after years of doing what he did he would his preamble before he met a, a new class was to warn them by the way 
I am going to say stuff that's going to throw you. It's my coping mechanism. I have a very, very dark sense of humor. So there's a reason why they end up adopting that type of humor, right? Mm -hmm. And that it goes to our conversation with Alex on a fairly regular basis when we're asking him about what's up with the Ukraine people and their wildly entertaining, dark, dark sense of humor. Like they're in the middle of war. And there's these TikTok videos of them like getting shot at by Russians and <laughs> laughing hysterically about <laughs> sticking a coat out on a stick. Dude, they're right? you know those those like those videos where the suicide drones are like taking out tanks and shit and they're blowing up whole supply lines and they they're they're, they're these videos if you if you follow Ukraine weapons tracker, it's my favorite mm. fucking follow on Twitter. Yeah. You, you can mm -hmm. see all these. And they put them to like Beyonce videos now. They're like <laughs> All the single ladies, all the because of the widows, right? All the single ladies, all yes. the single ladies, and there's like, and then there's all these Ukrainian guys going, hey! cheering, yeah. yeah. As, as Russian guys are stumbling out of trucks that are blown up with fucking arms hanging off. All the single ladies, all the it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> uh, from funny. one podcast that we love, spies like us, to another that we love and are fortunate enough to host. Please welcome back to the program, James D. Fiore from Black Hello. Ball Podcast. Nice to see you, you Hi. sexy bastard. I'm I'm a first-time watcher. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> nice Long to see listener, you, dude. Time. How are you? Good, man. I'm just celebrating Ramadan, you know? With a croissant? Just, yeah, in the middle of the day when the sun is up because yeah, that's right, how we do it. When it up. I'm just shocked mm. that you haven't been on the show for like a month and a half and you're eating first thing Already. on it again. It's the best. Yeah, yeah, the gates. <laughs> it's a croissant, Lachlan. It's not a child's food, I don't think. Right? Uh, do we call it croissant? Because I feel <laughs> douchey when we call croissants croissants. I don't know. I mean, if you're gonna go full, if you're gonna go full English, you should just say yeah. crescent. I no, guess. it's croissant. It's croissant. It's not croissant. If you say croissant, you're a douche. But why or would you French. only have croissant. French? The I, word I say croissant. <laughs> yeah, croissant. But that's half French. Croissant. Croissant, yeah, croissant is French. Yeah. And crescent yeah, but I, is English. I'm not in French. You have a hybrid in... way of saying it. That's a Dude, hybrid. I am croissant. not in France. Croissant. I'm not in Quebec. It's croissant. Then it's a crescent it's roll. Not... No, it's not a crescent roll. It's a croissant. It is literally a crescent roll. That's what it is. That's what oh, a croissant is. Is, is that yeah. is croissant French for crescent? Correct, sir. And it's oh, the perfect oh, Ramadan food today. because of that. I'm so glad <laughs> you're back. <laughs> we're learning already. <laughs> Everybody's fighting. This is great. Uh, no, I'm just asking about croissants because he was like, as soon as he came out, he was eating and he's like, I'm just having a croissant. And I'm like, I was instantly triggered because triggered. anytime someone who isn't French, no offense, I know you're from that area of the world. Um, but anytime someone isn't French, like my ex-wife, every time we were around a French person, she's like, oh, uh, do you do you like croissants? And I'm like, you never talk like that. Like you yeah. never ever time. You know those people that oh over inflect yeah. the adopt, French, adopt yeah. the language. Yeah, I don't normally do that, but yeah, but the but the hybrid version is weird. It's like yeah. if you're gonna go French. There's a couple French, of nationalities yeah. I do that with, but we don't need to go there because it would probably be. <laughs> Like when people when people speak to somebody else with an accent and they slow their speech and their cadence down and like almost like they're almost like adopting it's mostly with European dialects it's like they're yeah. adopting the 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 yeah, accent they, almost yeah oh well, bonjour monsieur and you're like yeah, shut my, the fuck up you're from I, Alberta my when I, I went to New York when I went to New York in uh, I was like 14 and we were at the airport and I was so determined to make it seem like I was from New York City. And the first words out of my mouth in front of a pile of New Yorkers at the Waldorf Astoria was this. Good to be home, eh? Because <laughs> I was 14 and stupid. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. My youngest daughter has this ability to mimic accents like nobody's been. And for some reason, it must be she's a, she's 22 and, and blonde. But she will mimic. And she's she gets taught by people around the world and she's spectacular at it and she will mimic their accent russian spanish irish she'll mimic it back like to mimic, the teachers and mimic a, an accent in like of an english person doing russian that kind of thing no, no or like, like she'll have a russian ballet russian. teacher yeah. okay and she will talk in the class she'll mimic their accent back you, to that's them douchey you gotta tell it's her. bad hey, honey, it's and, but they love it she endears herself to all these people and i think the russian accent is, is hard like you got to be able to spit when you talk and everything she Crazy. nails it like all of these accents and she practices them 
I don't know, in her head or something. And then she'll do it. We, and she keeps us in stitches when she's telling stories about other te- like teachers that she's had. Uh, some people just have this ability to like nail accents. And I, I've never been able to. I, they all sound like one. If I try one, it all sounds like one. And we don't need to get into that either because it would seem racist. Yes. Is it an Asian It's not accent? racist as long as it's white accents. Then you're fine. <laughs> That's right. You can't do accents anymore at all. Like that's no. like, especially in public, you can't do accents keep, at all. I, I, like I, I have tried I try so many times every once in a while. Right. Like Guys, my I know son I've came said home this joke before, but, but right now in India, there is a guy doing a kick-ass Canadian. Accent, oh yeah. But we're, but we're not that's allowed. allowed. How, can we, poo? how can we never those, see yeah, those? Rule. Those are my favorite. <laughs> like uh, the, that guy from that, uh, that nerd show on the uh, TV that he does that Kuthra Pali guy. And he, when he does a white accent, it, I crack up oh, every time. It doesn't matter what he's saying. Great. So good. The, the reverse is my favorite. But to James's point about the Russian being such a hard one, yeah. I watched a comedian talk about um, a self-defense technique that if you're walking down the street in a bad neighborhood and somebody comes up to you and says, uh, you're in the wrong hood, and he says, just grab a cigarette and put on a Russian accent. You would think I'm scared of this neighborhood. <laughs> it's right. Who the fuck fucks with a Russian? <laughs> Dude, I went to a gas station the other day, and they had three guys speaking Russian outside putting gas in their car, and one guy smoking right next to the pump. And I'm like, they don't care. Hey, yeah, and I'm like, I'm not saying a fucking word to you. You can, no. you can blow the fucking whole place up. I wasn't wearing like, a mask. So let me get you out can of tell here. that Ukrainians hey, dude, and mask? Russians are. You can tell Ukrainians and Russians are closely oh, related yourself. because of that landmine guy with the cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Like they don't care. Like, yeah, hands things. in their pockets, kicking landmines. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Across the cameraman laughing. To step on top of them to yeah. blow them. But have they thought about the fact that maybe if you kick one hard enough and it flips over <laughs> and trigger. blows up? No. No, that's... Thought maybe not things made in Russian or all or in Russia are always that great of quality. <laughs> Probably not great. Can, Canadians, Canadians, and by Canadians I mean Albertans would just try to flick caps at it from a distance to see if they can mm-hmm. set it off. I'm actually oh, really good at that. Um, see. James, yes, you had a fucking twelve bell interview yesterday. Two things we're here to talk to you about. You have a little bit of news to talk about the convoy uh, as we're trying to unwrap that. We just had Mubin on to talk about those bullshit artists. Um, but something happened the other day. So Randy Hillier got arrested. Now, Randy Hillier, as we all know, uh, got arrested probably because of us. You're welcome. Um, and all the other things that he did. Again, you're welcome. Um, whether or not you think he's guilty enough uh, of the crimes that he's been charged with doesn't matter. What matters is the process has begun. And Randy Hillier is in deep shit. He's off the Internet. He's not allowed to do shit. Uh, but he had to go and get a lawyer. Now, you interviewed his lawyer, which is incredible because... I talked to a few lawyers about that interview, including our friend Damien at Beard Winter LLP. And I'm like, do you advise like does your does your firm go? Yeah, go out there and splash out a fucking great interview and talk about our clients problems. Um, And they're like, absolutely not. No way. We're not doing that. In fact, he said to me, most of us are under a gag order for shit like that, where you're not allowed to do anything at all. So Dave Amber is is Hillier's lawyer. You call him and you're like, hey, want to do an interview? He's like, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I was shocked. I was like, I was totally thrown off because I was like, eh, I'll just give it a go. So I, I actually emailed him and I'm like, hey, David, um, you know, I've interviewed Randy before. Randy and I get along. Tell him I say hi. And, uh, you know, I'd like to have you on the show. And he's just like, I can only give you 45 minutes. And I'm like, done. <laughs> <laughs> please. and then the, and then for the next 24 hours i was like please don't talk to an actual lawyer please yeah <laughs> like whatever you do <laughs> i didn't even so think first, of that angle like he first thing i've done that interview yeah no first thing i Lynch. came away after watching that was you know what thank god he's got him as a lawyer that means he's actually going to go to jail <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he wants to go I, I, to jail, but I yeah. want to get to. So I'm gonna play a clip from it, um, and I want to talk about your impression from it because, um, and I want to find out a little bit about who this David Amber guy is, like the only dude in Canada that, that that has the ability to to represent or wants to represent a guy like Randy Hillier. That's kind of how it feels. Like when we were watching the interview, and I was watching the interview, I'm like is this guy like like a practicing lawyer? Like he still has a license and stuff like that? Can I that? say one thing before you play yeah. the clip? Is that if yeah. you watch where he's at, it, it's fine because I'm pretty sure he doubles as a real estate agent who's about to show an open house. So just if you look at the clip, you'll see what I mean. It's Are true. you serious? 
Is he? Yeah. Is he? Oh, he's got a little real estate deal he going. He looks there. like he's sitting in a model home, waiting for An clients to come in the yeah. door. Yeah, yeah. Um, You'll see. Is okay. Before I play the clip, uh, we're playing this clip. This is and you. Can, he's got. Yeah, we'll get get through it as fast as we can. He's got an open house to get to. Uh, we're gonna play this clip for you now. Before I play the clip, uh, this is from James's interview, Blackballed. You can download it anywhere you get podcasts: Google, Spotify, uh, iTunes, or sorry, Apple Podcasts. Fuck, it's so hard to get out of that. Uh, Etc. You can also download it on YouTube. Uh, you can go to his Facebook page, James DeFiore, Blackball the Podcast. But I'm just looking at him in the in the little video here I got before I play it. It's making me laugh already because of where he's sitting. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. So this is a clip with James is interviewing uh, Randy Hillier's lawyer, who was also a PPC candidate, lost weird. Um, here it is. I'm representing Randy Hillier. Uh-huh. And yeah. if we didn't have people like Randy Hillier, who were objecting to the way things were done, uh, we would have probably accelerated further down the path of of sheltering in place and and living and being governed by fear. And so I think Are the you voice sure about that? Do you want to do you want a moment to maybe rethink? Do you want a moment maybe to rethink that statement? You know, if it wasn't for Randy think, Hillier, there'd be more people. Is that kind of what you said? There were voices of many different perspectives. And Randy Hillier was one of the few politicians that was objecting to the direction. He in said which it was we fake. Going. Pardon me? Uh, he said I, the I, pandemic I, was fake. I, the reason I'm not familiar with the tweets that you're talking about is because I'm not. You just said that if Randy people. Hillier, what, like if, if, if there was, you just said if people listened to Randy Hillier, there'd be less dead people. Or sorry, you said it that yeah. if there was no what Randy I Hillier, there'd was, be more dead I, people. I, I if you, you can make a claim like that, that you can speak it. Hold on. If you can make a claim like that, you can at least speak to the idea that. Randy Hillier said it was a fake pandemic, which may have actually caused more deaths. I think that's probably uh, look, I'm, more. I'm accurate. not here to sit in moral judgment or to defend the accuracy of what Randy Hillier said on the pandemic. But what he I, just what said I am he saying, saved lives. I don't think those were my exact words. I think you kind of put words in my mouth. Here, here's okay. what I, I said. I said that it was important to have voices, including those of Randy Hillier. Fair enough. No, I didn't say enough. the lies were big. I said they were spacious. You know what I? It's spacious. You know what I love about that clip is the part where you slowly inserted your finger into his brain as asshole of his brain and started started doing one of these and moving it around with like facts. And when you're like, My "Hey, have you seen was... the tweets?" and he's like, "No." And and right before that, he's like, "I'm his lawyer." And you go, "Have you seen what he's done?" And he's like, "I'm not familiar with it." If yeah. I was, if I was a lawyer taking on him i would want to be familiar with those things before i actually a represented him b took a retainer or c spoke about him publicly because i don't know who david amber is i he may be a nice person off the camera that is the dumbest fucking lawyer i have ever seen in my entire (laughs) life and i've had to deal with lots of them yeah he was i I loved your reaction james when you were like (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, he was a strange cat, I thought. I thought he was like, he kind of seemed, I don't know, like like an intern <laughs> or something at a law office, maybe. He described he described May the 4th, which I called yeah. Star Wars. I'm like, your, your trial starts on Star Wars Day, which is neat. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'm like, <clears throat> you know, what do you expect from the pretrial or whatever? And he's like, and, and he answered the question like this. I get that question a lot. I'm like, what question? Like, what? <laughs> I didn't even really ask you a question, but okay. And then I, and then he described it like this. May the 4th is generally when pretrial starts. So a lot of people don't understand that. But it's when the puck drops. Okay, great. Thanks for the hockey analogy, Wilbur. That explained everything. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. Dave. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I don't, how I didn't is know- he allowed to be a lawyer? How is he, like... <laughs> Every lawyer, I, do you know how many tweets? Because we put that clip. Up, you know how many tweets we got after you put out that story from people who are like, uh, I, everything that guy said and did was like terrible and wrong, and everything a lawyer shouldn't do. Like if I showed Karima that video, she wouldn't be able to stop laughing for a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was gonna have Karima on to sandbag him, but she's like, eh, he probably because yeah, Karima's like too it. nice. She's not. Yeah. I couldn't bring her down to the depths of my basement. You know. <laughs> By telling her I wanted to uh, say no one can. She's I, she's unflappable yeah. that way. Her yeah. cape was just stuck on the top floor of the penthouse, and I was just couldn't get her through. Right, so I Lock, anyone wanted to say something? You're getting, no. You see your face? No, you didn't want to say no. anything. You just no, looked no. like you're phasing out. Yeah, no, no fascinating. Yeah, it, it 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 was an incredible interview. Go and download the uh, the thing. I mean, it, it was he. Did, did did you get an inkling from that interview that he might have been involved in the convoy? 
Uh, <laughs> well, he would have been a great to be like uh, at the same level as a Tamara Lich, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was a useful a idiot. Of sorts. Does he know that Pat King still needs a lawyer? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure he's on the list of calls that he's making as soon as the couple that comes in to take a look at the house leaves, right? But um, <laughs> I don't know. I can't stop making that joke because he just looks like he's. <laughs> when, when we before we were that? on air, I'm like, I, I, I before we were on air, as is my tradition, I totally insulted him by by literally saying to him, "Are you waiting for people to come to take a look at the house?" <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and and he he looked at me with this blank stare, and he's like, well, "What do you mean?" And I was like, uh, look at look I, at James's uh, face. I got his yeah. face up here on the camera. He's like, "You're <laughs> fucked, dude." And then the other guy, David Amber, who's talking to him, is legitimately in an empty house, trying to look like he's not a side hustle real estate agent. This and is look at fucking the, awesome. Look at the pillars of justice behind him. That's <laughs> like, right. Yeah. If somebody, Randy's if, fucked. There is nothing in that house. If somebody no. in this no. in the in the, the that's watching right now owns this house, let us know. If you're mad yeah. that. So this guy did a video in your house. We'd you like pan the camera to the left, and there's just like a sleeping bag on the floor. You know? Did he tell you? Yeah. Did he tell you that was his office too? So he's like, oh, he told I'll me it was his this. home. Oh, did he? he yeah, said, there's no way. He said he was a minimalist. Yeah. So, no. Yeah, yeah. But now it's that big. He's a minimalist because he's, he's talking got no about fucking furniture. Account. He's an idiot. What yeah. a terrible he's... idiot. <laughs> so That's what he is. He's a terrible idiot. That's <sighs> fuck. I cannot believe how many terrible idiots are lawyers. Anyway, um, from one terrible idiot to a whole bunch. You called me today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this tweet up because this tweet created some, I'm going to say it ruffled some feathers, kind of ruffled a few feathers. You put out a tweet today. We talked about it prior to the tweet. I was just contacted by a Conservative Party of Canada staff member who claims the Liberal Party are sitting on a story, re a direct connection between the start of the convoy and the Conservatives. Nothing confirmed. If true, it's both a bombshell and manipulative to wait to leak it. And then you tagged Pierre Polyev. So weird. <laughs> I wonder who this is about. Um, what ex okay. you? I know what you're talking about. I know what you're going to talk about. Mm. We all, we talked briefly with Mubin about eight million missing from the Give Go Send Fund. So uh, we've opened up the conversation about the convoy as much as I fucking hate talking about those degenerate pieces of shit. However. As we discussed today, there are some rumors, uh, and I want to get into your conversation with said individual, rumors that there are some high-priced, I'm talking to you, Locke, in Alberta, high-priced conservative talent, federally and provincially, that may know way more about this convoy than they're uh, setting up to, correct? Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Cor that would be correct. Um, okay, I want to preamble all this by saying that I haven't proven <clears throat> anything, um, you know, th that was said to me today. But since I sent that tweet, I've talked to two other people, and there is some circumstantial uh, evidence that I'll get into in a second that would indicate that the convoy started as, uh, you know, basically a, a, a spitballing session between um, conservative operatives who wanted to figure out a way to launch Pierre Polive to leadership. And there, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back just, just for a second to sort of like draw the lines properly. Uh, you may or may not have heard of my, Michael Sona, and you may or may not have heard of Trevor Stack. I'll start with Trevor Stack. Um, Trevor Stack used to be a staffer in Rona Ambrose's office, and then he secretly recorded liberal MPs trashing Justin Trudeau, mostly for his uh, stance that um, his MPs had to vote or even had to have the opinion of, of, of being pro-choice. And um, a liberal staffer called it a, like a, a bozo policy or something. And then Ron Ambrose staffer, Trevor Stack, sent it to Sun News Network, who then played it, and but it got caught um, somewhere along the lines as being the person who recorded it and then went went silent. Michael Sona was the guy that went to jail in the robocall scandal. He's the guy, uh, he's oh, yeah. the kid in short pants in the office that apparently was the mastermind, I think he was 23 or something at the time, who masterminded this entire robocall scandal and ended up going to jail. I talked to him, I've been talking to him for a couple of years. He doesn't like to talk about it, but the stuff that I've gotten out of him is basically, like I've asked him straight up before, so you weren't the brains of the operation. He's like, obviously not. And I'm like, it's funny that you won't talk. And he's like, I'll never talk, right? So <clears throat> now the parallels are this. 
it's not the same people. Obviously, Michael Stone is not in politics. He's kind of a he's kind of a nature guy who just wanders in the woods with a gun. It's weird, but whatever. <laughs> that's beyond. <laughs> that's besides the story. Um, but the point is, is that there is a there, there are these parallels that happen every time a conservative scandal sort of takes place, or every time operatives have been busy. And what that looks like is um, clearly Paul Ave and people like Jason Kenney, they don't want their fingerprints on anything. So they have staffers, and then those staffers have people that they want to do things so that there's enough space between those people and the people that those staffers work for. In this case, there are indicators right now. I just literally, before uh, I came on air, uh, was talking to a former Stephen Harper staffer. This person was an events coordinator when, uh, for like six years when Stephen Harper was prime minister, who said... Absolutely, um, this was a conservative operation. And then I talked to Tamara Lish's lawyer today as well. And I, what I did was um, I gave her all the, I, I, I basically said this, I'm like, okay, I have to, I have to go soon. Um, I don't really wanna say too much. Um, I made it really cloak and dagger for her so that she'd get excited. And then I'm like, write these two names down, Trevor Stack, Michael Sona, Google them. And you just let me know if you want Tamara Lish, uh, your client, to end up like them and then call me back. She just called me by the way, but I put the phone away. Um, so what we're looking at potentially is, is just another one of those situations where conservatives decided that they wanted, dude, this is what they do by the way. And the liberals do this too. Um, and the reason, if I can just do an aside for a second, the reason why some people were a little bit bitchy with me, I think today is because they thought I was in the tank um, for the conservatives somehow. What the tweet was supposed to indicate, and I don't really like Twitter's character limits because I think it's binding sometimes, but I was trying to say two things. Neither of them were good about either party. One of them is that this was a dis this is a disgruntled staffer who doesn't like what they're seeing. Maybe this person doesn't like Pierre Poilevé. Uh, maybe this person has another dog in the hunt or whatever. So they're telling me this information because they're disgruntled. But they're telling me that they they know that the liberals have it and are sitting on it because the liberals want it to impact the election. I don't know if that part of the story is true. I did place a call to my my liberal dirty tricks guy that I know that just to see if he knows anything about it. But the point is, is that I, I don't like that part of journalism where journalists become de facto members of the war room of certain political parties by holding on to a story until it does maximum damage to the party that their their source is running against. Does any of that make sense to you guys? Is that yeah. All yes. that makes sense because I talked to you earlier. Questions? <laughs> yeah. Anybody questions? I got a few. Uh, yeah. let me ask you let me ask you this question. Um your conversations today with former or current conservative staffers, your conversations today and in the past, uh specifically today, uh there was an indication that this wasn't about Mandates, shocker. This wasn't about religion, shocker. This was a political operation that you can probably at some point, which I'm sure that you're working on, I know you are, so I'm saying that, draw a straight line from the pain and the suffering that was caused in Ottawa back to a couple of very important, high-profile conservative politicians. Let me, let me, is that, is just, that's what I'm assuming here. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. That makes, so yeah. let me, let me throw a couple names at you. Jason Kenney. Yeah. Well, Jason Kenney and Pierre, Pierre Paul Levey are like thick as thieves, right? Um, by the way, the, the alias that they gave to the guy that made like that, ha that bought a phone card during the robo sc call scandal was Pierre Poutine. <laughs> Because apparently that's a really good way to hide Pierre Poilevé's identity in the whole mess, right? So it's Would like never got that one. No, I know. I'm sure someone was really. I'm sure Poilevé was really. Can we really can we do a quick story? The Robocop. Yeah. Every time you bring it up, I keep going. Okay, fucking Robocop. I know what this Robocop. is. Robocall. Robocall thing. The uh, Robocop. can you? Sorry. That's can okay. you give me a quick thirty second? reminder of what the robo call scandal was because i know it was provincial i know it has something to do with kenny and i know it has something to do with the last Harper. election yeah it's been a while since i've even went down there but the robocall scandal was basically like an auto dial system 
that would call and redirect people that they knew were liberal voters to the wrong polling stations. Yeah. So they wouldn't be able to vote on election day. That's basically. That's yeah. that what that's what it was. And that was a conservative com- effort. That was yes. a huge conservative effort. To the try same same, to same, to uh, same They targeted directors. liberal voters. Sorry. They right. targeted Hold liberal on. voters to 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 confuse them so that they wouldn't end up being able to vote. Right. And they did it in key ridings where it was like pol- the polls were too tight to call. Right. Now, same yeah. uh, same members on the board uh, that were from the remember what happened last summer, lock with the um, the PC Ontario PC invoices that were sent out as fundraiser mm-hmm. letters, but they look like an invoice. Remember that mm-hmm. same company that 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 crafted that, or same people from that company are the same people that were involved in the robocall scandals, which I find like fascinating because in the world that i live in politicians always abide by all the rules and they would never do anything wrong no of course not or try to manipulate any vote they're like priests like that you know know they're like priests in that sense if if what our man jamesy is telling us which being on the inside i can tell you he had these conversations and i've seen receipts right yeah uh if our man James Ryan, you've been in the political game, you know how this shit works, dude. If yep. our man Jamesy is telling the truth here, and they dig up enough dirt, and if the liberals are sitting on us, douchebag move, by the way, super douchebag move. I hate yep. talking about politics. Bear with me. Fucking hate it. It's gross. Politicians are gross. Politics are gross. They're not politicians. All of them. They're power center agents. All, All of them. them. Every party can go fuck themselves. Everyone. So I'm glad I got that. But if this is true, if indeed all roads lead back to neoconservative cocks like Pierre Pepper Potts, Jason Kenney, Jeff Ballingall uh, and every single other neocon fucking white privileged piece of shit that lives in that alt right universe trying to convert conservative policy into hardline assholes that do the bidding and give the money, if that's true, and they are involved or had that much to do with setting up the convoy, those fucking guys are in a world of fucking trouble, and I cannot wait for the schadenfreude. Hey, Rook, 111. 111, mark that for the lawyers. I got to... I got to respectfully disagree a bit, Dean, because I'd like you to point out what politicians were held accountable in the robocall scandal. None, which is why I wanted to be held accountable now. This will be the exact same thing. No, well, I think it it might not be because the robocall scandal. I'm sorry, I forget the year even, but like I'm pretty sure there wasn't social media wasn't really it hadn't arrived as it is now. Right. Like it was like. It was what like was it, 2011? 29, 29. I, I'll look it up. So quick. Facebook was like two or three years old. Yeah, it was, it was very, it wasn't as, as manipulated as it is now. 2011. 2011, yeah. yeah. So if these pe- these convoy people are, are a bunch of Michael Sonas um, waiting to get uh, prosecuted and sentenced, I think they're probably going to talk. Michael Sona, the reason why Michael Sona didn't talk is because he was a loyal conservative. He was a loyal conservative operative yeah. doing what he was told to do. It was unethical. It was this and that. Should he have talked? It's a matter of opinion. He didn't rat. He went to jail. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. Like he, on one hand, he's really unethical. On the other hand, you almost got to fucking give him a little bit of props for not ratting out everybody because, you know, I, 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 I would rat I, I'm old school like out. That. If I'm faced with jail and they're like, hey, listen, you're going to go to jail. I get that. Tell but it takes friends. balls no to, to not friends. rat. I'm ratting everybody out <laughs> as soon as I can. And Locke, yeah. you're the same way. Rook, if someone Rook, comes up Mark to you and says, you did these. 113 <laughs> for Locke's lawyers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be ratting out everybody. <laughs> every single fucking person. I have no problem with it. That's what I find unbelievable here. And it's not just with this, but it seems to be with these hardcore neocons. It's like, let's protect each other. Let's not talk. Let's hang a couple of guys out, maybe give them 10 grand in five years. And, uh, you know, all's good, right? Because we accomplished the goal of pulling one over on the people of this country. Let's say that James is onto something that there is this tie between the convoy 
and it, it's similar in nature to the RoboCop thing. And this is all sort of a, a conservative ploy to undermine the, the, the current government, blah, blah, blah. What, whatever, whatever happens in six months, a year or whatever is beside the point. I think the reason why they did what they did and used who they used is because the general public will look at the parties and the players and go, they're fucking more. They're clowns. Look at the group. And we're going to stop there. We're not going to be able to, as a public, watching this on the news unfold on CBC and, um, you know, Solomon talking about this in CT, as we, and, and you know, Vashi, as, as they try to uncover this, we're going to stop. We're going to have a wall at the clowns. We're not going to be able to make the jump from Tamara. She's an idiot. Pat King, he's an idiot. These Useful fucking ones. morons. So we're not, we're not going to be able to jump to, oh, this can't have a connection with politics and actually have a cause. It's going to stop there. Does that make right. sense to you guys? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Lots 100%. Lynn, so it's... we're we're never going to as a as a as a voting public we're never going to hang hang this on the politicians and the people that pull the strings because they've got this veneer in front of us of dumb. The insulation think, of a useful I... idiot has been mm -hmm. around for the like since democracy was yeah. a thing, and you're absolutely right. It's they they are they are there for a reason. My question is, and I'm wondering if with this. Now, because we, we suspected this right from the get-go. We had theories. We talked about it, about how this was a politically motivated thing. Yeah, I want to know about the uh, the Maverick Party um, with their prior involvement in the per the convoy that we saw before. The original convoy that, that fell on its face, that all the same actors were there, all the same yellow vesters were there. Yeah. And that one didn't take off as well. So they, they all regrouped and they came up with the Freedom Convoy because it was okay. such a good, easy one to, 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 to get everybody. The, whole, the entire country was pissed off about, about mandates and masks. And so they, they realized that was, that was the gas. That was the gas for the fire. The embers were still burning. Mm. And uh, I want to know maybe within this discovery that we're seeing that James is, is on to the immediate exit of... Tamara Litch from that party, like the sudden abrupt, she left as secretary. I want to know what the tie in there with the CPC was, uh, because that, that, that's going to be very telling about the, the, the alt extreme end of the right wing. Uh, well, that I comes think those, those kind of fringe parties are also used as decoys. That's, right? that's what I'm thinking. And that's why yep. I think she was a perfect stooge. She was a perfect clown for this. Mm. And the Pat Kings are perfect clowns for this. And look at all the pictures They're of Pat pawns. King with Pierre Paul Leve and uh, with Jason Kenny and a a Andrew Shear fist bumping them outside the fucking in, in Ottawa. It's, and then looking around for cameras. Yeah. Making sure nobody caught that because <laughs> they know that and they know that that's their wall. That's their, <laughs> that's, that's their, that's their, uh, well, that's field. what they did. They looked yeah. around for guys. Point. Just keep doing like this until you find cameras or a person of color. And then, then go shake hands. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. <laughs> Uh, but that's you bring up a great point. And uh, I did some reading on Tamara Lish. Did you know at the time when a one point two million was shipped into her account from GoFundMe? Did you know she had a negative balance? Yeah. Did you know that the years previous that she had a balance of zero in her bank account? She's only had one bank account. And did you also know this shitty bartender is what that her, is? Her, yeah, <laughs> terrible. Uh Awful bartenders and bartenders keep those tips in cash, bro. That's it. Um, yeah. But no. But, and did you also know this? And I found this fascinating is that not only does she have n zero financial training whatsoever, she had didn't have a GoFundMe account. Uh, she only had like a Twitter account at the time. And she was an admitted like, uh, you know, tech idiot. And yeah. somehow w in one day she went from having a negative balance to one point two million in the bank was able to yank like 26,000 out before the, 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 the TD was like, how the fuck does someone with a perennial negative balance magically have 1.2 million in her bank account? So speaking to that, I mean, this isn't someone who had the ability to do the things that we've seen. I mean, we've seen the slide, right? We played it a little bit earlier, 24 million. You're telling me Tamara Lish has the ability to go out and fundraise 24 million in less than a month? No, I mean, 
you know, these are incredibly smart politicians that are behind this. These are lobby groups. These are yeah. agents. These are actors on behalf of an ideology that all fit into what appears to be the conservative party. All roads lead back according to every metric that we've seen. James, you shared some with me today. All roads seem to lean back into that party that has that ideology. Yeah, listen, um, I, I I have to be careful, I guess, how I say this, but this is probably well, the work of Pierre Paul Levesque. <laughs> <laughs> say that again? Like, a little louder? Please. I said I have to be careful while I say this, but this all pretty much leads to Pierre Paul Levesque, right? Like, it's like... <laughs> I mean, it does. Well, it, look it at does. what the look at what the convoy at accomplished for the for the conservative O'Toole? party. Oh, yeah, dude. O'Toole. I mean, that, yep. right? Like, so if you look back to look back to when um, when O'Toole ran as leader, and Pierre Poilievre, and I literally just got a message. Well, I'm sorry. I'll, I have all this stuff Poilievre. coming in while I'm. Poilievre. Sorry. All I know is that you can't spell Poilievre without the word without the word lie. Literally, like it's right there. Or cock. Um, yeah. Croissant. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, cock in there? There is I no. just got I just got a message the okay, from the Harper staffer. Yeah. And and she's speaking in riddles right now because she, she's being kind of a dick because she knows I'm on air. But she's like, <laughs> all you need to do is ask why Pierre dropped out last time. And you'll find the answer directly and completely. And I'm like, he said family. What was the real reason? He's like, so two years later, family doesn't matter as much anymore. So she's giving me breadcrumbs, probably because she has a relationship with an actual reporter at a mainstream outlet, right? This is what she does. Mm -hmm. We have a love-hate relationship, and that's fine. But if you remember when he dropped out last time, and then the election this happened. This is fascinating, by the way, James. Thank you for this. Yeah. No problem. And, and then, then the election happened. The election, if you look at Pierre's ads, now I don't even want to say his last name. If you look at PP's ads... <laughs> Right? Poilievre. Yeah. Poilievre. Um, Poilievre. If you look at the ads that he was running for the for the election, those were campaign leadership ads. All of them. They were so much better than the party's ads for mm -hmm. O'Toole. They were like him walking and shaking hands and da-da-da. He's not the leader. But he was it was all like she's just telling me now that Grooming. that that it, it well, he was he was setting himself up to become leader. Yep. And you nailed it. I think it was Ryan with the convoy that the Maverick Party was largely responsible for organizing the Yellow Vester convoy. Yeah. Wasn't that what it was called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then you get the, the person who was leading that party to represent as they become this like grand pooba of the largest convoy we've seen in the country because she is so smart and successful. And beautiful. Yeah, it, it's not really something that um, that's plausible. Like, it's, yeah. the, and so the only thing that makes it plausible, and and guys, we all were on this page months and months and months ago. Yeah, Dean, yep. you wrote that article. Ryan, you were doing like killer research at the time. I was just pontificating while I was stoned, but happened to be onto something, right? Like, but it, it was the like, leader ads. The, that that was a very poignant uh, observation yeah. of 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 his his ads. Like the quality of his ads were fucking outrageous. What was to I doing? Yeah. Drinking. Forgot, forgot Drinking you were calling. Things. You were calling pierogies sealed tacos or something. <laughs> A taco pod. I usually catch up on the pod, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just say catch up. Do that for you. <laughs> a taco pocket. <laughs> Can I get some real delicious tacos and taco pockets <laughs> and ketchup? That'd be lovely. Um, I find this fucking awesome. Like, and I also find it uh, scary a little bit. Not enough to like be scared, but like, you know, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. So if yeah, you're this isn't unique to the conservative no, party, it's been we, can we it, say it, that it out? is unique? It is unique because it combines all of the other scandals into one. The money part of this, which I haven't even really looked yeah. at at all today. I, I not even close, but I, I, I haven't figured out the money thing did, and, and I haven't the, had anybody did, explain it to me yet. But like there's how, scandals. how are they using the GoFundMe's to launder? It doesn't well, make any sense. Well, there's scandals. I don't know about the laundering part, but I don't even know if they expected to get this much money. I don't know. Right. But like there's scandals. OK, the robocall scandal was about confusing liberal voters to win an election. Remember the in and out scandal? They no. didn't want to pay taxes on the fundraising element of their campaign. Yes. So they'd raise yes. a whole bunch of money and then they would transfer that money from one office to one conservative office to another. 
and they did it like 35 times in order to avoid the taxes of paying uh, 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 the taxes that they would have to pay once. So they wanted to keep like all that money when they were obligated to like give back like I don't know how much it was like X amount of percentage in taxes or whatever. I do remember something about that. Yeah. Yeah, and so this scandal is like, it's it's. I, it's it's ballsy as hell, but like let's just assume for the sake of this conversation that it was a political operation. I don't think that they anticipated we twenty four million dollars. I don't think they anticipated Elon Musk donating forty two grand. I don't think they anticipated the way it snowballed like this. And I think they actually got in over their heads, which You're made right. the Tamara Licks of the world and Pat yeah. Kings of the world just delirious with how confused they must have been. You know, you don't they're... think. You don't think in your heart of hearts, I'm asking you two guys, I fucking hate politics. Let me just do a little thing. I hate politics, politicians, all parties are power centers. Go fuck yourself. Uh, but you don't think in your heart of hearts, either one of you two guys being political. I'm talking to Ryan and James. Locke, no offense to you. Um, but Ryan spent a lot of time working for a political party or helping yeah. out uh, where his heart was, which I totally love. And James is, loves this shit, like lives for it, writes about it, and is one of the candidates best at it. No but if you get, do you really think that if Pierre Polyev and Jason Kenney and a couple of other conservatives, if they are found out to have had something to do with this, do you really think that they didn't get in touch with their ideologically aligned asshole brothers and sisters in different think tank groups and say, hey, we need some help here? Because that's what we saw activated. Like we saw all kinds of foreign help. We saw all kinds of foreign money like that. This is they're going to press that ideology. The Conservative Party of Canada wants to press those dangerous, hateful, bullshit ideologies and conservative neocon assholes around the world that love the same ideologies, whether it's anti-abortion, uh, whatever the the case may be theocratic shit whatever those things are they're all in like that's where that flood of money to me comes from and then there there is an end user here right there's one person that walked away or a couple of different groups or people that walked away with eight million dollars out of that give send go fund that no one can find i mean we just covered it this morning we talked about it with mubeen he's like and, and and i talked to a guy today and he's like there was an end goal. They knew they were going to sacrifice at least a third of whatever those donations were to come in. But that's what they're trying to figure out now is because that's where you have the gotcha moment, right? The gotcha moment is and and there's going to be journalism. I know we're going to do some work. You're going to do a ton of work. Thank God you're doing it because I don't want to do it. Um, but like you're going to do the work. But where we're going to get a payoff as far as who to hang that fuck you collar around is going to be when we find out where that eight million went to, right? Well, don't you think? Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Go ahead. No, I no, no, I, I didn't. No, I, mean, you go I right was just going to say, don't you don't you think that oh, they nice. didn't anticipate anyone getting arrested? That's what I mean. Because now, if someone rats, if someone yeah. decides that they're going to be the, the whistleblower, then all of a sudden, Pierre Polyve, whatever oh, yeah. Pierre Polyev. Poly P O L Y E V. Pierre Croissant. Croissant. <laughs> right? Is going to be on the nickname, hook Mark. possibly for criminal charges. Right? Okay, but That's why I, this went too far. That's why I think this snowballed out of control for everybody. Because if Tamara Litch and Pat King and whoever else are all up for charges because they organized the convoy, and then it turns out that a sitting MP and possibly the new leader of opposition was actually the one who organized the convoy, then he goes to court. Right? Yeah, That's why I don't think any of this was intentional, at least the last chapter of all these charges. Great point well, uh, that Rick Love makes here. I just want to bring this comment up. Uh, he says, Tamara Lish probably has five fetuses hidden in her bedroom closet like that weirdo in the USA. That could be the case. That's a little uh, out of left field, but okay. Uh, you, <laughs> okay you, can't didn't, you, can't, you can't discredit it because we don't that can that, that can she be might. asserted are we talking without about the evidence. Fetuses or are we, yeah. can, I, can I throw something start in that. here? Yeah, go ahead. I I think James is right. I think James is right. Nobody had any idea what this was going to be. It was an attempt at a fuck you parade for Trudeau to undermine the the, the government. And we'll see. Hey, it kind of worked with the yellow vest thing. Can we add a little bit more gasoline to this? Can it can we get a little bit more um, you know, steamrolling with this whole thing? Mm -hmm. But here's where I think you guys are wrong about them catching anybody. They never had any intentions of this ever coming back at them. Never. Whether it was 
another hundred people more than the than the yellow vest thing that they did the year before, or if it was eight thousand people in Ottawa for for four weeks. They never had any intention of being caught. Mm -hmm. They may they may not have known how big this was going to get, but there was never ever going to be any way of tracing this back to them. So yeah, I, that eight million dollars may have only been hey let's see if we can make a million bucks it's hidden away very very nicely no one's going to find that money it's gone no one's going to find out who took that money or that that eight million goes to a lobby group or the cock brothers as we call them the coke brothers or a couple aiq or a cambridge analytica type group thing where where pierre and, and the conservatives are like we need some help here. We'll pay you whatever just to get Aaron O'Toole out so we can morph into the party of assholes. Yeah. I mean, doesn't the right? fundraising arm of this whole thing scream Ezra Levant too? Who what who 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 dropped out of his seat so that Stephen Harper could run and eventually become prime minister, who will fundraise if Menzies stubs his toe, literally, right? Mm -hmm. Um, who has relationships with all of these conservative lawyers, who has relationships with like a couple of the convoy uh organizers. I mean, if you look at like if you look at all of the deepest conservative political operatives and you squish them together and you put them in a room you could get a convoy once you leave that room seriously yeah. you could get the con you could get every element of it um i don't like speculating like that but in but in a way i do because um and this is another thing that people are giving me shit for is like why are you why are you spreading rumors if you don't know if it's true or not and and that's a really good question actually and the answer is as follows i don't like reporters that want to to become that war room operative for a party just so they can see their name in lights which is exactly exactly what reporters do all the time that i know a liberal um i guess you would call him a bag man or whatever he he knows everybody he knows the prime minister he's known every liberal prime minister he's very successful he could pick up the phone and call trudeau anytime he wants but he was like he told me once i've told this story i think a year ago but he told me once that he, I can't remember what the story was, but he was like, yeah, this story's gonna come out. Uh, and I'm like, oh, when is it coming out? He's like, Tuesday. And I'm like, okay, um, how do you know? He's like, cause that's when I told him to put out the story. And I'm like, what? Ego. And he, and he th well, then he's like this. I also needed to edit his piece a little cause he used the wrong adjective. It didn't have enough thrust. And so I, he's going to use this adjective before this in the opening paragraph. And I'm like, get the yeah, fuck ancient. out of here. Like, what are you talking Brian about? Brian Lilly, dude. You were talking about Brian Lilly. That's a dude's trending today because this he's is a, a Toronto star. This agent. is a tr yeah, this is a Toronto star reporter. Yeah. And, and sure he enough, on Tuesday, it came, true, that story you... came out. That adjective was used like it was all exactly like how he said. And so yeah. the conservatives and the liberals do this. And these reporters are just they're just whores. Basically, they'll just sit there and wait for their bosses who are the operatives not the editors to give them the green light to publish the story so that it will cause maximum damage to the political enemy of the person that's telling them to do it here here's a quick aside um when a friend of mine got fired from sportsnet and i won't i don't have to tell you who it is doesn't matter a uh, high profile guy got fired <laughs> from sportsnet um they said to him we need you to write your exit letter that we're going to publish about you quitting and he's like i'm i got fired He's like, no, but we need you to write that. He's like, fuck. If you, and they said to him, if you want your severance, you need to write a nice letter about us for firing you. And he's like, whatever. Writes a letter, sends it in. PR sends him back a completely different letter. Said, thanks. This is the one we're going with. Have a great day. And you have to be okay with it or you won't get severance. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the curation of a totally different narrative on behalf of a corporate group. And, and, and to that point, um, every party does it. Every single political center does it. It's no different. I mean, we're not taking a strip off conservatives because we hate them. I happen to hate the ideology and I fucking can't stand organized religion. And they embrace both of those hateful things. And I love to take streps off them because it's my fucking favorite thing to do. But my point is this, is that nothing you see is real, right? Like the, the idea that a bunch 8,000 people just showed up <laughs> out of nowhere.
and especially yeah. those people, those fucking idiots. Yeah, that's it just stands no reason. We, we we had our sniffer on that one out of the gates. This this yeah. had this had political leanings on it. I mean, we were we were hinting at that right from the get go. We started reporting on this in January. We were on mm-hmm. this. You had us doing well, fucking Saturday and Sunday fucking podcasts, and we were talking about it. Like we were hard on this, and and, and you know what? The thing is, though, I and I I need to say this out loud because I I just want to make sure that people know this about me. I don't think that the liberal and NDP coalition would ever do anything like this at all. <laughs> of course they would. They're all the fucking. Same. They've done it. <laughs> Probably Many doing times. it right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Is it? Is there ever been a better time, Linz? I'm going to ask you this because you used to work for like volunteer help. I'm going to try to get it. coalition in a couple more times, Linz, just Please before do. the end of the podcast because I can see how much it pisses you off. <laughs> um, I think it's a good thing to be honest with you, and I it's hard for me to say that, but Linz, it's best it's the best situation for what well, we have. Fuck off, right both now. of you. <laughs> fuck off, both of you. I like it. Let's um, spend our way out of our fucking. I don't want to talk now. about that. I don't want to talk about that. What, Linz, I want to ask you something. When it comes to politics, do you remember a time when you were involved in po- political stuff where you were like, I enjoy this. I feel like it makes a difference. Municipally. Municipally. How do you feel today, um, knowing what you know about the political landscape, being as grossed out as you and I have discussed several times? It's one of the reasons, I think, why you backed out of working in that area. Like you just said, fuck, I cannot do this anymore. Do you recognize politics now? No, or, like, are you grossed out? As grossed out as I have always been, I uh, I didn't have any uh, I didn't have any uh, I wasn't stupid. I knew what politics were like, and I knew what it, I was getting into when I did. Uh, I thought the party I was with was the best choice for what I wanted to do until I got in and saw the inside workings of it, and saw the way the money worked, and went. This isn't right. This isn't fair. And um, yeah, the rewarding part came from literally the municipal side where you were actually on the ground talking to people about, you know, I don't Issues. like this uh, stop sign in my neighborhood and I could make a difference in changing that. And I could, or I want more stop signs in my day. I want a speed bump on my road. My sewer backs up every two weeks. Who the fuck is going to help me? And I'm the only guy there that's, that's helped. So that was rewarding. Like that kind of politics all politics are local. Bill Clinton told me that once when I met him at Carmen's Banquet Center. Um, he told Sam uh, uh, Marula, a city councilor, and I were, were in the, the rope line. And Sam was kind of sheepish, and he said, you know, I'm just a city councilor. And, and Bill said to Sam, he grabbed him, he says, all politics are local. You're the one that makes the difference here. And he was right. And it was a, it was a good mantra to keep in, in your head. But then as you try to go on, it gets dirtier. It gets more um, uh, con- like just the the the, the self interest. It takes over. The greed is is beyond um, recognition. And then even even when you think you're in the right place and you're doing that, all I all I can say is 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 Jack Layton would be rolling in his grave if he saw what was happening right now. Mm. Same with and- Preston Manning. Yeah, Not well, dead. rest in peace, <laughs> Preston Manning. Rest Poor Jimmy. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, but back to what Lachlan was saying about the um, coalition. No, don't do that. <laughs> back to what Lachlan was saying about the convoy. Yeah. Other C word. Um, you're. I think you're onto something here. Even though you don't think that you're, you think that it's just your opinion. I think you're actually you're dead on. And this is this is the funny thing about politics. Dean said it was a bunch of brilliant politicians. That was. Um, you're, and, and I don't think you're, I don't think you're, um, accurate in that description just because they saw this, they knew where they were going generally. They knew where this was going to, this was heading. They took the money and ran with it. Like they just kept going and they saw it and they said, they're like, this is getting too big. We have a, we have a fucking, we have tra- trailer swift in the front of the cameras. Like she's. <laughs> She's our fucking point person here. Kirk she's Coke the one that railer Swift. She's the one that's got her face on this. How, she can't. We can't have. But we really want that money. Yeah. All right. Just keep going. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll just fucking do it. We'll on the protect fly. you. 
we'll I'll write you. it and we'll do it live. That old Bill O'Reilly thing. Just keep going. Just keep going. We'll we'll deal with it. And now they're yeah, dealing. You're with good. The, 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 so you the, just think it's a runaway train. You just think it, it was a terrible idea. It, it born is born out of fucking terribleness, and it got so bad, and it was a runaway train because a bunch of different other assholes latched onto it because they wanted the same things. They're like, let's support that group of assholes and give them a bunch of money. And it, all of a sudden, it's twenty four million, and everybody's standing around with their dicks in their hands, going, "What the fuck do we do now?" Like, what, what, we do what, what I think we're looking at is whoever whoever we do find out at the end of the day is behind it. There were the they were the ones at the at the engine of the train pushing on the gas while everybody was yelling, "Whoa, whoa! Hit the brakes! Hit the brakes!" Mm. But they yeah, would have covered up. their tracks enough because and they knew know. that they they did enough work in the war rooms before they launched mm, this thing. Did they though? And that's what I mean. I I think the I think the success of the fundraise clouded the judgment of of the execution to the point where i think a couple of t's may not have been crossed and some i's didn't get dotted and we're going to find those the only so reason can i ask I a question to agree with you lins is that we're talking about it right now so somebody made some mistakes yeah the, like i if, think the mistake that was made is that they raised too much money that's uh, right yeah i think i think we're all in agreement there uh, james yeah. real quick uh when we were talking today and uh, this came to your attention because the liberals you said are sitting on this story correct I, I didn't say that, but that, that that's what the source said. Um, the source said. I don't know if that's true or not. And the source, uh, yeah, so go did ahead. She say, but, did she say that when, when it might come out or why they're sitting on it, any of that stuff? That's what I'm asking. She, uh, it, she or he said that the um, sure. that the liberals were sitting on it so that they could release it as close to the election as they possibly could to inflict maximum damage to the conservatives. Which election? Federal won't happen until 2025. Federal. So are we talking provincial? Or are we um, talking federal? Like they're they're going to no. sit on this maybe for three years? Is that correct? I don't think yeah. twenty. Do you really think twenty twenty five is when the next election is going to be? Do you do you well, think that that's do you think the coalition the is going to actually survive? Really, don't Stop say that you. word. Don't you, say the word. I don't want to upset you. anybody. I'm I need all great the support. Day. I Everybody's get. getting along. I don't want to fight. <laughs> I just want to don't say the word. Go fuck yourself, Linz. Thank you very much. Everybody can go fuck themselves. By the way, go get your GFY T-shirt at the Dean Blundell.com <laughs> shop store. Uh, here you go. Oh, you can nice. get a hoodie. That's where we can uh, all get on yeah, the same that's page. Right. That's, that's right. right. You know, you all, of those, all of those, all of those, all of those T-shirts are just a coalition of really good things to say. You know, yeah. and I think go that fuck we yourself. Good the for you. It's nice to have you, James. Yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> hey, by the way, James, just, we'll get the black bald um, site up, the merch yeah. site up soon. Oh, great. We'll chat. We'll chat. We'll just be of... bald and black. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, by guys. the way, guys, um, yeah. you should be thankful that I wasn't on the high five show. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, we know that. that was an unnecessary yeah. statement, but thank you. For your uh, no problem. I, I was about to like, I literally wanted to just call Ryan and be like, do you want to cry together on the phone? Because <laughs> I'll do that with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was already, uh, I was already, my, my emotions had already been placed so very flatly on my sleeve at that point. So you were funny. You were like, oh, the, we uh, you were like Samantha from who's the boss when she'd run upstairs yeah. and slam the door and then open the door and run back downstairs. <laughs> you know Dude, I mean? like, that was a great show. I could care. What do you fucks. need? Lens, this I was thinking yeah. about it afterwards. You need another like twenty years of disappointment in this business before you stop doing that. I need a I need a louder <laughs> microphone to get you to stop walking on me is what I need. Oh no, you wow. gotta accept it. I'm you sorry. Playing the role I'm, of James, I've been dad Ryan today. I, I've had a I've had a rough <laughs> rough week. I'm not feeling well. I'm on a yeah. lot of medication, and um, yes, I may have been drinking earlier today too, which I'm doesn't playing the role of James like Lachlan Dude, Cross. I don't know why you're not still <laughs> drinking. You have to go and drink. You cannot do a show and stop drinking. You got to drink the way through it. We fucking talked about this because you, yeah. you start to like you, you, everybody knows when you start drinking and you stop, you 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 fucking crash. I don't want you mm -hmm. to crash. I want you to keep drinking. I want to fucking yeah. make sure that you drink more. That's what I, I had, want. Like, yeah, I've had a bad week, and so I, I started drinking early today, and then um, and then I stopped because I thought, well, maybe I put some liquor in my coffee, but then the coffee disappeared quite quickly. <laughs> There's probably a shot of that. liquor in that goatee of yours. Look at that thing. <laughs> Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes I want to do before uh, I, I let you guys uh, run off for the day. And I cannot uh, finish this show without going back to this thing because I thought about Lachlan masturbating on a plane last night. Thought about it a lot. We and uh, for that? What, no, we want to get it. Uh, it came from this story. This guy jerked off on a plane four times when they arrested him after he landed. He's like, I'm sorry. Was that wrong? I didn't I didn't think that was wrong. And then we went around Same the table and I'm said. like, as, and Lachlan's like, I've jerked off on a plane. I have to ask you this one question. I've jerked off on a plane. 
Yeah. Thank well, you. Let James. me ask oh. both of you this question. What it's is to Vancouver? It? It's a long flight. Yeah. It's four hours, dude. You can't. Not, here's the thing. That guy jerked off generous. four times on a one hour flight. I waited to jerk off at the connection flight in Edmonton. So. OK, hang on. Just wait. I want to ask you about this. Both of you. Linz and I are settled on this. We have never wanked on a plane. Um, but I have to ask both of you. What was it that was in your head at that moment that that made you go? I have to masturbate right now. Dopamine. <laughs> I drugs. I was I have okay. to know. So yeah, I, I, I had okay. to you really have an excuse. I have a I had to think about it because you guys put pressure on me to come up with the flight. And um, back in the day, <laughs> we used to get flown back and forth from um, from Canadian Music oh, yeah. Week. Right. So, so we go to period. Toronto mm. and I was a music director so the back in the day. They used to send music directors and you'd go hang out with radio people and everyone would just get piss drunk for like three days and there'd be seminars and um and and then there'd be shows at night and all it was was just it was a who can drink longer event for radio people and so um i drank excessively through the course of the three days and i was on the flight home and realized i have a fairly hefty schedule in the masturbation department <laughs> and I had not done that, and it just seemed like a good time to do it. Way to pass the time. Yes. So I, it was a flight home from Canadian Music Week from Toronto to, to, to Winnipeg. Not a long flight, but long enough for me to make a little bit of a deposit into the... <laughs> to whip up a batch of wiener wine. <laughs> Yeah. Hand start Just, the old one eyed yogurt thrower. I, I can Lock, whip up a batch Lachlan of one day, Lock, Lachlan one day is going to be sitting on a plane masturbating, and his his, his elbow is going to accidentally hit the flush. Yeah, dude, your balls could end up in the cargo. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait until the next time Lachlan jerks off on a plane. The only thing he's going to be able to think about is our judgment. Us I'm looking not at you like this. You clearly I know. Do like, not I know James know. was high. I know, no, but James can, can I say one thing? My just, ability to I, ignore yeah. other people's judgment is strong. <laughs> I have I have stay. had a conversation like this before with people, and 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 I really, if you really think about it, if you truly think about it, would you rather walk into a bathroom on a plane where Lachlan just took a shit, or just jerked off? I shit my pants. I'd rather poop no, it, myself. It's a, you what? I'd, I'd poop, poop myself. myself. I wouldn't want to yeah. go in either. Yeah. So, the, but the I choice, knew that he just gave choice. it a pull, and, he, and I know that he just gave it a pull, and he probably was standing in front of the toilet when he was doing that to make his deposit. He's not going to get it all in the toilet. I'm not. I don't that know thing. why. I you guys find think it that funny. a guy jerking off in a bathroom is not as bad as shit molecules pouring all over your skin and in your nose? Really? Well, no one's shitting on me in the bathroom. You just I don't want. I don't want Lachlan it. blowing a load on me either, James. So <laughs> no, it's, I don't know. Done. It's, it's, it's not tricky. This is a Sophie's choice. No, it makes it sound like, like I was in the. <laughs> this makes it sound like it was in the aisle. So I was choice. This is a Sophie's choice. Yeah. So Lachlan, choice. I, in my inaugural episode us. back on this show, I am. You're not wrong. I'm We're in talking your canoe. About Just don't yeah, check off while you're in the canoe. You know, Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> With me, if I'm in the same right, canoe so, as you. So what was what was James? What, what, what was your deal? What he was, he was stoned. stoned. I was on stoned. cocaine, oh, and oh. I really needed to have an orgasm. <laughs> I love how honest he is too. I have one more question to ask you guys before I let you go. Okay. I put up a tweet today, so I saw a tweet that bothered me. And, and it was a religious tweet. I want to ask you if I went too hard. Okay. Did I go too hard? We need to have a feature on this show where it's like, did Dean go too hard? What do we call this? So there's a, a tweet that someone put up today. It said, there's a 0.0296% chance that your child will become a professional athlete. There's a 100% chance your child will stand before Jesus. Get them to church. Mark 942. By the way, that is not a Bible verse. Um, and I looked up the Bible verse. What it says is this. Mark 942 says, if you, uh, if you encounter someone who leads your child astray, we should drown them and hang them. That's what Mark 942 says. So. I replied to this, and this is what I want to know. Is this too hard? Because every time I see something this fucking evil, stupid, and dumb that comes from a religious person trying to get everybody to join the dumb flock, I have to say something. It's like it, it, it just lives in me. It's like, fuck, Dean, you have a job to do now. You need to take a big shit on religion. So I tweeted, there's a 100% chance taking your kid to church will make them dumber. 
but go ahead. Make sure the little shit has money for the offering plate. I think that's pretty innocuous. Like that's that's pretty mundane for the shit you normally put I'm, out. I'm not sure yeah, innocuous that... is the word I would use. <laughs> it's innocuous. I think yeah. it's an, it's an, it, it, yeah, it's mild. Like yeah. if, if 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 it's from like um I don't really like Jesus at one side of the spectrum to yeah. I finger paint with Mary Mother's uh period blood on the other side of the spectrum, you're like that's at not. a three and a half, you know? Like you're not even that high. It's you know? been a rough week for religion on this pod. I'm uh, booking I'll throw a flight that out now there. that one. <laughs> Whoa! Really? Rough. This is the spectrum. I, I, it's not me. I'm just telling you what the spectrum is. That's I I think here's what I think. Um, our issue is is that we don't separate. Also, I did put out another tweet next to it that said, "Also, there's a zero percent chance heaven is real, so there's better odds of your kids being the next Gretzky." That it, so anyway, Mild. continue. Two and a half. Yeah. Thank you. I I. I find the conversation about religion difficult because I know very little about it. So the reference points and everything like that um, are, are tough for me. And I, I feel like we're ha- we got high fidelity on it. I'm trying to fucking connect all the dots to the conversation we're having with him. When, whenever we're talking about religion, I think you guys have all had a little bit more um, uh, involvement in it in your past. Correct. And I honestly think that your, your hatred for it uh, be it warranted or not warranted, or, or your awesome. level of of of, uh, of consternation for religion is hard for me to watch. Because can I help? What? Can I help? Can I yeah. help? Because I find it really easy to say that like, the easiest way out of a of a, an opinion on something is to say that you don't understand it, even though it's something that's been around your entire life and it's been around you forever. So let's change it to Santa Claus in the North Pole. If they said Santa Claus and you were going to the North Pole, mm-hmm. would you put any sort of reverence into that? Would you put any sort of credence into no. that? No. Because there's I, no difference. Yeah. And no, they no, both, I, and they, both of those, what right. they have in common with each other is that they have to tell you and indoctrinate you when you're still a child in order to believe, to believe it. Okay, well, okay, to, but here, to, to direct you with fear. Here's ahead, the Mark. point that I wanted to make is that I, I think that and this is coming from the guy raised by hippies who never cracked a Bible, who knows nothing about religion. I always get a little bit of, you know, that flop sweat that you talk about, uh, yeah. Dean? Anxiety. I get yeah. that, that anxious when you guys talk about religion because it's so harsh to me. And it's, it's, I, I find, I'm not sure it's the best strategy in showing how you feel about religion. And I don't know what the answer is because I think there's a lot of people out there that have religious beliefs that use it as a guide for their lives, but aren't very religious. Like, yes. okay, like let's They'll take the let's, philosophy out of the religion and follow the philosophy, not necessarily the Fugazi like Mubin, Bukaki, which yeah. is again, which want, is against, which is against, against religion. Yeah. But That's I like the Lincoln we, Lachlan. Have you ever heard of the Lincoln Bible? No. The Lincoln Bible is Abraham Lincoln took the Bible, removed everything that could be considered a miracle, like the burning bush, the talking snake, walking on water, turning water into wine, and then you have the Lincoln Bible. So maybe that's like an easier sort of digestible well, version. And, and 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 listen, I'm not I'm not seeking out religion. I, I'm not I just feel bad for the people that use it for good when they're when they join our pod. <laughs> And you are taking a massive dump on all of it. I just wonder, that's why I'm always a little bit um, twitchy when it comes to it. Because can I, can I share you also story have very religious I, people in your life that are good people, Dean. Yeah, yeah, yeah my family. They, like, yeah. they, brother they have a, a real, fucking great My brother's guy. a reverend. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, my family loves it. <laughs> no, now, but I, I, let, me, let me just put this up for you before you guys. Uh, so I, I also feel the same way. I feel like we've got... A bunch of people that have embraced certain religions. Mubin is a very good friend of mine. He's a devout yes. Muslim. Uh, and and I, I asked him this question the other day. In fact, we'll have him back on to talk about it because he's like all into it. I'm like, how are we such good friends? He's like an agnostic and a Muslim walk into a bar. They have common sense so they can be friends, right? That's right. Th- th- there are, it, it, there, there are, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the zealots or I'm talking about the crazies. Like this fucking idiot who subtweeted me. Uh, where after this is after I posted the picture uh, where I encourage people not to take their kids to church because it'll make them dumb. 
Uh, he said, Dean, we can't be friends anymore. I feel sad for you. Your attitude is stopping you from receiving any negative opportunity to learn something new. Negative breeds negative. Anyone who chooses that believes they are always <laughs> correct and may never be incorrect. I will pray for you. Uh, my reply was to post a picture of a kid dressed up as Satan telling him to go fuck himself. So, um, Can I share I, a quick I, story I, before I thought I go? took the high road there. You did. You did. Um, I want to share a quick story. For you. I just came to, I went to Toronto. I just got back a few days ago. I had to get a ride share. And my ride share was a devout Mormon. And oh, I um, love that. I recorded the entire conversation. Yeah. <laughs> right? I put my phone in my pocket and I'm like, so Mormonism. And uh, we just talked or whatever. And she told me about all this stuff about how like, um, how there's no hell in Mormonism and that there's heaven and the heaven is a lot like the other kind of Christian heaven, like Catholic heaven is almost the same thing. And she's like, there's different, there's different levels of heaven depending on how good or bad you are to which I responded. So it's like Dante's Inferno only with air conditioning. And she, <laughs> it was quiet for the next two hours in the car. <laughs> okay. So for me, here's, here's the next step in the, I know in, what you're in, in my issue for, for this is that, I am adamant that um, that you don't tell me how to live my life, right? And so no one should come on my at my door and and explain to me that the way they the path that they've chosen is the path of everyone, and that you if you don't follow this path you're going to doesn't matter. But X, isn't y, that Z. what this what this meme said? Yes, isn't it that is. what these yes, Christians is. are doing? Isn't that what this person's so, doing? So that was me doing it back to them only you, being better at it you don't even need a meme yeah. all you need is the original texts of the religion the yeah. original texts in in islam we're infidels we are not going to anywhere good feel, after we die the original text like, in, in catholicism and stuff is is like we're we're atheists we're going to hell but you know, i feel anybody like luck i i'm sorry guys i feel like we're telling them that they've made the wrong choice that's where i that's where the flop sweat comes from me like, I, listen, I might not agree with it, but that's where I get on edge when I see the, you doing that, Dean, or or we're railing on religion. I, I, that's where I get to it. I'm just being honest with you. I appreciate I you doing that, but I, I want to go back to like uh, several hundred of these podcasts where you're like, religion is the plague of the 21st century. I, can, I, I believe that. I do yeah. believe that. I do believe that, but I try not to spit it out. <laughs> All the time, except for Daily. the time in front of thousands of people on this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> where it can inflict the maximum damage. <laughs> I love how he was just going for it there. Right? You, he did yeah. that to me a couple of months ago, where I'm like, I'm a glass half full guy, and he's like, "Fuck yourself, you are not. You're the most negative cock I've ever met in my life." And he was absolutely correct. So when he's sitting there, by the way, it's time for fucking comeuppance. That's what this is. You've sat here for the past seven minutes, yeah. going. Guys, I don't know about yeah. this religion thing. I can no, go yeah. back in the history of these podcasts and I can get 50 yeah. different comments of you going, fuck, I hate religion. Religion oh, is a scourge Whoa, of the 21st I century. I'd I, rather have fucking the bubonic plague than be involved I do. in any I, religion. I, I truly believe that, but I've also <laughs> tried to follow that up and I'm not always successful. I try to follow that up with if you need it in your life, then right. good for you. Then yeah, that's totally. something you've found. Right. Right. I, I don't know. No, 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 no. Well, can, I agree. I'm sorry, guys. But go ahead. I Lens. had four beers before lunch and then dumped a <laughs> bunch of whiskey into my coffee and came down and did a podcast. So I can't judge people. I, I can't. I can. I will. Go ahead. Rin, I, I love it. Linz, you're going to say something? And then we'll no, I just, it, what, what kills me is, is that is the group think that may, people, it makes them think that their faith is what, what made them succeed and got them through that day, Lachlan, when really it was yourself that did it. You, you did it, and you're not giving yourself credit for it. So believing yeah. in something that steals that away from somebody is it, that's that's it's 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 robbery you're, you're robbing yourself of the credit you deserve for getting through something when you're giving it to a sky daddy and um, somebody that Invisible. nobody's ever seen and Invisible. yeah religion has never done to... anything damaging no rape no no murder, no. no genocide no. no slavery no. none of that shit no no, no. Yeah, that's the and, thing and, hey lock but, just well, be polite when, like, when, when we're shitting can, on sorry Lynch, go ahead when you can turn and um I, I guess custom make your religion to suit your wants and needs 
Yeah. Uh, even though that's in the original text of religion, um, you're going to hell for doing that and not following God's rule. Yeah. Um, but now it's convenient. Like the Pope it's now likes health. gay people. Like, could you imagine the Pope 50 years ago hearing that? You that guy get burnt at the fucking stake. Religion. How did is you the know? I mean, burn him at the stake. Fucking piece of shit brainwashed garbage that has done nothing but detriment to this society and maybe one person woke up happy and thought hmm, plus jesus yeah fuck that that wasn't an altar boy brainwashing fucking centuries and centuries of brainwashing and fucking yeah. wars and yeah. rapes crusades and Residential yeah. school genocide stuff like Fuck that. that. If you ever get to a point in your life, and let me just say this, and we'll, we'll close with this: if you if you are ever at a point in your life where you see guys like me taking a strip off people that post these ridiculous "go to church or you're gonna die" memes, yeah. that's what this <laughs> is. Uh, I, I want you to know something: if you use religion for yourself because you love the philosophy and the lessons of whatever specific religion you good for you read a better book though but good for you good for you <laughs> if you're one of those people by the way you can get that shirt at deemblundell.com shop drop down just right on the front page um if you're one of those people that uses religion to have an asshole conversation online or to scare people into some kind yeah. of fucking bullshit afterlife residential deal some kind of real estate in the afterlife deal yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where we can draw the line, boys. It's nice. nice. I, I do appreciate the fact that you have found a way to separate the anxiety of having those conversations and that those disagreements online and be able to live your life. That I I'm not there yet. I think that's also part of it. Like I I would get that's very weird that anxious. You have it about it's trying because to, I do have Dean would have it because shit. of Jesus spear because of his youth I'm sorry to cut you off um but he would have it because of his I don't youth. think you are Jesus spear melts away when you get older as it did with me yeah. you wouldn't have that because you were raised by hippies so I don't even understand where your anxiety comes from my think, anxiety is just trying to be a good guy the yeah. conflict guy. the unnecessary conflict yeah. they're just living their lives they put something out there you have a point I, I don't have to agree with it yeah and so I I'm 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 kind of in awe that Dean does it because it's, I'd like to still be that guy, but I, I, I can't, I can't bring myself. Whenever I get into a disagreement with people online, quite often I just block them. I go for it. You fucking go for it. Full balls deep. You go for it. And it's, it's fun to watch. It's just, it's also, I get my, I get anxious. I, I swear Fast to God. Box. I'm not going to stop. Do you want me to stop? No, 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 no. I would never tell you to, because you get some joy out of it, too. I can see the joy you get. A ton. So that's our I religion, just, Locke. So don't, yeah. Yeah, don't shit on my religion. I just got an update on, on the my religion. Bear thing that I'll tell What's you your update? Afterwards. What do you got? Um, I think I might want to actually not say this on air. Okay. Because okay. I haven't I haven't vetted it at all, but it comes from that Harper. It's not paper, like we completely so. blamed him for the convoy. <laughs> Apparently, uh, let, let me put, let, I'll, I'll be ambiguous. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely his fault. Um, but the, <laughs> but apparently Jenny Byrne, who was the um, chief of staff of Doug Ford, and she has been like the campaign oh, yeah. manager and the chief of staff of so, so yep. many different conservatives. The um, Pierre dropped out of that leadership race and said it was because of his family. Yeah. And she just basically told me that um, they were boning. It was sort of protecting his family, but it was protecting his family from some bad thing that Pierre may have done. Did he hit the old squish mitten? It's possible that he had a babysitter. You get right in there? Pierre probably have get right in there. So Jenny apparently threatened him and said that, that if you Can run... I be sued for just being a guest? <laughs> Sorry, James. You go just ahead. put guest in I front just, of my name. I'm go just ahead. happy to be back, Lachlan. That's all. <laughs> I'm in the wrong Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> this is the call I'm supposed to be jerking off. I had no idea it was on the show for two I hours. I can't get it was out call. of this room. <laughs> I'm very technically in What is this happening? <laughs> I am Sorry. actually in Dean's house. <laughs> this is his basement. Send help. I tried to tap my phone and it won't let me out. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I got more tech shit for you guys. Oh, oh let's end okay. the show on a Lachlan tech tip. It's okay, 514 so p.m. Okay. You can hold down 
a pin, a, um, a um, text. Spit it out. Hold it down. And react and to it. We'll get these options on the bottom. Yeah, you can know. pin your favorites to the top. Yeah, we know. You can pin texts. Yeah. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. I just found that out yesterday. I'll bet you somebody in the comments that with you didn't know. And now you ruin it for me. No, so I'll bet you somebody in the comments didn't so know, and you just taught too. somebody something cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, hold it down. It gives you a pin option, and then it puts it up at the top, so it's always at the top. So I've got my group text. Like I've got a group text with Dean and Rook, and Scotty, the merch guy. I got that. Mm -hmm. I got my wife up there, and I got the the, the locker room. There you go. All right. Thanks, boys. Can, can, we, can oh. we get you to do these like in quick uh, micro content things for social media? Do you think that would be a possibility one day, Lock? You can cut a bunch of these idea. for us. Yep. If I get let out of the basement, for, anything's possible. Like for Saturday, <laughs> one Saturday. All right. I'm just trying All to get right. myself out of the lawsuit, the pending lawsuit. We'll cut like 30 okay. of them. There's uh, no lawsuit, dude. There's no lawsuit. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Let's wrap it up. Let's let's do the 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 Ukraine shirt. Yeah. Okay. Because there's mm -hmm. been an ex there's been an addition to the Ukraine shirt to raise money for Alex. If you go to the DeanBlundell.com and you go to the shop button, it'll pull down the merch page. Okay. There's that one's at the top, right beside the Slava ukraine shirt which is for sale which we're using to raise money to send to alex 100 of the proceeds go to alex there's also a little write-up that ryan did yesterday that's there there's a link there's this page the donate to alex in the ukraine we're trying to find something a little bit more appropriate to put in that box as far as a picture goes maybe a picture of alex with his kid or alex delivering stuff to one of the subways the underground bomb shelters uh but somebody had asked in the comment section yesterday saying that uh can if if i don't want to buy a shirt can i just donate some cash so we found out that we can do that through the merch page so you can do that there i think there's a ten dollar a twenty dollar and a fifty dollar donation option on that on that on that box so click to that and i'll just charge it to your credit card mm, thank you yeah uh these shirts are great and uh, if you want a shirt great if not donate uh, what we're doing with the money, if you go to DeanBlundell.com, the drop-down menu shop, it's right on the front page. Uh, if you go to that shop, what you can do is shop or you can donate. Um, and we've been pushing and shoving these Slava Ukraine shirts. That's the Ukrainian Army logo, which is fucking really cool. I love it. And uh, if you don't feel like it, like my buddy Abe yesterday sent me a note. He's like, listen, I'm going to buy one shirt, but I want to donate a bunch of money. How do I do it? And Lachlan uh, and our guy Scotty were kind enough to see that happening because people wanted to donate. A lot of people asked. And you can donate to Alex in Ukraine and he's going to take that money and he's going to use it to go and buy food, tea, water, mattresses, microwaves, baby formula, diapers for uh, hundreds of thousands of people that are currently taking shelter in the Kiev bomb shelter, subway, underground, etc. So um, we're doing this because we love the man and he needs our help and we would appreciate if you do it. We take no money from this. Uh, we do, however, take money from these GFY shirts and uh, we would absolutely love it if you bought one of those too. But if it's between one of the two, don't fucking buy our stuff buy alex's stuff uh or donate to alex because it's super important to us that we get him some help so I appreciate yeah, you yeah, that up. yeah what an amazing all... amazing uh response last night on on social media there were so many uh replies of people that were you know hey i just got my shirt i just got my shirt i bought three sh the one lady bought three shirts yeah like people were uh, like all over it the response amazing. we also have a client in edmonton that's gonna jo I, i'll learn more by the end of the week early next week about their involvement. I was talking to Dean when I was driving home today. Um, this is before I started drinking and we were having a conversation about um, the fact that maybe we should have our expectations set a little higher for this, just based on the early response that we got from people that just listen and watch this podcast to the fact that other people want to jump on board. Maybe, you know, we thought we'd send them a couple grand or something like that from the sale of the t-shirt, but fuck that. Maybe we send them enough money. They can buy another van that they use to run to the border to grab shit, right? Like who fucking knows? Yeah. 
We Whatever should see if Pierre Poilave can help us raise money. <laughs> yeah, he'd yeah. be good at it. Might Bob and I were talking about it earlier. How they? I was looking online yesterday. eBay, like all these Ukrainian farmers are selling like uh, Russian tanks on tanks. eBay. Four hundred grand. We could get Alex a tank and some ammo for four hundred thousand fucking dollars. A B seventy, a T seventy two, a T eighty. We can get them all brand new fucking tank because these Ukrainian farmers are just picking them up and taking them into the thing. Going fuck, let's throw it on eBay and see what happens. I would love to get him a tank and some javelin. Yeah. I wonder what the duty is on a idea. tank. I would love to deal arms. By awesome. the way, our producer also wanted me to tease the fact that there are other options up there and a new one. If you're a baseball fan, go have a look. There we go. Yeah, we covered all is. our sure. business. Rook is happy. Boys of summer, baby. Boys of summer, you can get these Blue Jays. They're not Blue Jays t-shirts. Not a lot of Speaking say, of lawsuits. Boys of summer shirt with a cool Blue Jay on it for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Um, in certain is colors that remind me of the summer. So what you do is you go to deepblendo.com. There's a shop drop down menu. You get a hoodie for you ladies. You can get a Jesus, t-shirt. You can get a baby dicks. doll. You can get all this stuff. Dude, we're the fucking worst. Look at this. This is incredible. This is how you have to make money these days. If you love baseball and you love the city of Toronto and you love these colors, birds, and you love the summer and guys that hit things in the summer, these shirts are for you. Oh, I was been also been summer. You guys didn't consult I'm me with any of, these, did any of the creative. I would have been all over the BJ thing with that whole yeah. 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 That's why we didn't consult you. The show was also brought to you, you by Snorty. You have glory hall above me. And you have... oh, come on. <laughs> You're welcome. We also have these cool Schadenfreude season shirts. I had a buddy send me this last night. Dude, I bought one of those shirts. I fucking cannot wait to rock that in front mm-hmm. of my family. And then we got these taco and wine shirts. All kinds. Of, we, my we family don't get the taco that. and wine shirts, but we sold like thirty shirt. of them. It's Lindsay's wife. I don't so get it. Lindsay's wife. She, she started the whole thing. She started this whole taco wine thing, and all we had to do is shirt. Is it if you drink, you get selling some... item? No, is it, it like, was a. If you get her drunk, it's, you'll get it's some. It's a little. Company. It's like a little battle battle symbol that the our our, our women in our chat that yeah. take on the trolls that show up in our show every once in a while. They use that as some sort of a battle cry symbol between each other. And uh, yeah. we said, let's put it on a t-shirt. And sure enough. I had no idea. Yeah. I don't know either. I, well, I, I still have been gone for a month. And we had, we I thought it was like, if you get drunk, you might store. get taco. That's what, that's what I thought it meant. I was I taking it. I thought it was too. too. kind of thought it was too. Christy bought a shirt. Melissa yeah. bought a shirt. Look at these guys. Fuck, I, I like tacos. People. Yeah. I like wine. They're pierogies. <laughs> Sealed tacos. tacos, trailer park pierogies. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Uh, James, great to see you. You can check out James' you podcast. Guys. I missed you guys. Missed yeah, you guys. we missed you, missed too, you bro. too. Great to see you. Nice uh, see you James DeFiore, you look great. Uh, at James DeFiore on Twitter, you, do. Ball, you, you look him. good, James. You look you real you good. Look, you got color in your face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You look yeah, less, you. less frantic. Or something. I did all my Adderall in uh, half a month, and now I'm at the second half, and so I'm sober, so I feel good. Atta boy, great to see you. Uh, follow Ryan Lindley as well at Ryan Lindley on Twitter. He is a beaut, and uh, our friend, my friend, you can go and follow him at Ryan Lindley on Twitter. You can also check out his podcast, the Sheeple Shepherd Podcast. Download, subscribe, download, subscribe everywhere you get it. Uh, that is Lock and Cross ninety five seven Cruise FM. He's got a date right now with a bunch of whiskey and a coffee cup, so we're gonna let him go. Listen to him every morning on the radio ninety five seven Cruise FM in Edmonton. At Lock Lacrosse on Twitter is where you can find him. He's also, I don't know if anybody knows this, he deserves all the credit for our merch store, him and Scotty. Like all the credit. Scotty. Is, uh, you do too. Yeah, a ton of merch. Bucks, and uh, if you go to dmondell.com, buy something. Yeah, well, I, I, uh, it's a startup and, you know, he deserves, he needs to do this work. Can I say thank you to all these people commenting? That's really yeah. kind of overwhelming. So thanks, yeah. guys. I, I, I Good to see all you guys over there. So Welcome back, that. James. Yeah. I had a Keep lot of up. people asking about you and whether or not I was the reason you weren't on for the last month. <laughs> Did you lie to them and say no? <laughs> <laughs> now, the podcast goes to 7 p.m. You know, that, that's the thing, is that what we do here is when there is something that needs to be taken care of, we take care of it for the best interest of everybody involved, including the individual, which is why I love James. Glad I'll you're tell back. everyone one day why I was gone. It's okay. I don't feel like getting into it. Like no, I don't feel like getting I'll... into it either. We love Quite you. On my show. I'll, I'll tell everybody on my show. We, Dude, we let you look at the curtain back. Content. You've never I done might be naked, content. but I'll pull it back. You've never done better content. You're fucking killing it. So I'm glad to have you back. Actually, uh, thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Really appreciate it. What's that? It's some great, great. I'm a big fan of co-hosting with James every once in a while, too. It's actually nice to sit in that co-pilot chair with him. It's It's a great interview. 
Do you guys want yeah, to finish this one off for us? Yeah, Dean, get out of here. <laughs> No, you got sponsors to do, and I always fuck them up. So, All right. love you guys. <laughs> I still think domination.com is something totally different than what it actually is. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I know make sure you spell that, that right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thanks, boys. Great to Just see no you. Thanks, guys. Ryan, James, Locke. Good to see everybody today. Good to see you today, too, as well. Uh, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us. Thanks to Mubi and Shake for being part of the show today. That was fucking great to see him again. Uh, you can follow him at Mr. Mubi and Shake. Uh, follow everybody. You can go to DeanBlundell.com. Check out everything. Look for James's article on Mr. Pepperpot later on today. That'll be fucking beauty. Oh, he's in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. Pierre Polyev is in. Who cares? It's politics. I get two fucks. Have a great day, though. Really appreciate you joining us. Hope you got something out of it. We'll be back tomorrow. Rod Black will be our guest. Very excited for him. We're going to talk about the Blue Jays opening season. You can go and don't forget, you can get those shirts that for no reason have a Blue Jay on them at DeanBlundell.com. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for being part of it. Don't forget, uh, say hi to our sp- friends and sponsors at Easy Auto Financial. Easy Auto Financial. They know how to get you into a car, depending on your financing, right? Like a lot of people have a problem with their credit. Maybe you're a little worried about it. Uh, they know the last couple of years have been tough. They don't care. They All credit is welcome. And they make sure that they take care of everything from getting you your financing to getting you in touch with the car that you want. It is all turnkey, no obligation. They don't spam. Sign up and talk to them today by going to easyautofinancial.ca. Domination, we dominate with content. You can do the same thing. Use domination.com dmntn.com it's ai for people that produce all kinds of online content makes your life fucking a million times easier you're producing promos uh, across all these different platforms you sit there and you pound it out with a file and you, you if you've edited video you know how much of a pain in the ass it is this takes all that work out of it use them today go to domination.com try them for free again dmntn.com uh they're awesome <clears throat> and of course ed's fine imports it is gitch g-i-t-c-h gitch order from ed today and he'll send you a free pair uh when you buy three or more pairs of gitch from ed's fine imports.com luxury branded underwear boxer briefs best underwear you'll ever buy fellas uh he's got a huge online store as well clothing for men and boys go to ed's fine imports.com that's it for us have a great day ta 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 really appreciate it oh easy auto financial domination and gitch that's it see you tomorrow rod black The crew will be back. Bye.